Okay. Yep. Podcast is up. Is this uh, 13? 12, I believe. 12. Okay. We're going to podcast 12. 12. I'm going to say it's 67. <laughs> go from there. <laughs> there you go. Gave you There's, a burp. There. That's you Andrew's in, intro you burp. saved it. You saved. <laughs> you don't want to hold it in. in. I, I tried you saved so it just hard. for us. I did. Saved we it need you. We actually started to let it go. Oh God, fucker! The show's still here to share space in the uh, Wonders camera too. Yep. For yeah, one she last leaves. podcast before she leaves some tomorrow, time in though. between. Yeah. If we want to invite her to like future ones, she can totally still do it. Oh yeah, right. But I don't I have to redo have an interface. The proper camera set up. <laughs> oh, you don't need. Oh wait, no, you have a laptop webcam. You can totally do it. Oh, would it be sufficient? My Dr. Oh, Pepper I... bottle is for the size. If anyone heard yeah, that recording. Like these get shrunk down into tiny little whatevers. Okay, I'm having stream troubles. Let's go anyway. So, uh, <laughs> do you have topics? What are topics? Just any topic. I mean, go for it. I've got talking about some games I've been playing lately. All right. Okay. So I just bought a game on a on a recommendation called Steven's Sausage Roll, which I saw your thumbnail for it. Yeah, title, dude. (laughs) It it has one of the worst video game titles I've ever seen, as far as getting people to buy you goes. Uh, right. <laughs> what caught my attention is that it's actually recommended really heavily by Jonathan Blow as a puzzle game. Oh, and that's, so like, that's a promising endorsement. Yeah, so suddenly I'm like, oh, okay. And like, it's not like it's not even like a throwaway tweet, but like he keeps talking about it <laughs> as being like this genius game. And I'm I got into it, and it immediately is difficult right away. Like, <laughs> l- like the witness, you just start playing it for a few minutes, and there's no tutorial really, and there's no. Uh, instructions and mm-hmm. and talking going on, but just by pressing a few buttons, you immediately get and all the mechanics figured out. A sausage? How does it work? So it's like a weird, uh, it's a weird variation on what I, I think it was called sure. Sokoban. Was was the te- was the uh, like box That's pushing push puzzles? Boxes. Yeah, box pushing. Mm-hmm. The the variation here is instead of being a little guy that pushes boxes around just on its own, he is carrying this tool in front of him that actually looks like one of those like four pronged like spits that you would like, roast uh, hot dogs on, basically. And Uh as you're moving it around, it's always sticking out in front of you. You take up one square, and it takes up one square. So as you turn, it it, it swings around. So you can smash... Sokoban's hard enough. Two-tiled Sokoban sounds like it's it's basically two-tiled Sokoban, where you're moving around with this as a two-tile size character, and you're rotating, and, like, you can push it with your body, or you can rotate your block around to hit it from the side basically and to push it sideways and all of the and their sausages so every single one of them is a one is a one by two and instead of being like sokoban where you're trying to just get them to specific goals or something like that the sausages themselves have four surfaces that need to be cooked and specific parts of the board are grills while the while other parts of the board are either open space where you can fall through and lose or they're like land you can walk on and so that you're... sounds really fucking hard. A yeah. and B, it sounds like exactly the game that Jonathan Blow would think is amazing. Exactly. So every oh, so <laughs> I, so a, a one perfect, square perfect. grill would cook half the hot dog, basically. Right. But it only cooks on one side. So you, so overall, those four spots to cook, and if you touch any of them twice, it burns and you lose. And the uh, individual boards usually have two level? to three so far. Like a, okay. I'm doing the first world, which is a nice touch of the thing is that it has an overworld that looks like a bunch of crazy blocks everywhere, but it has little silhouettes that look like your character, and you walk you walk into the silhouette and face the same way as the silhouette, and that just starts the level, which is that individual chunk of the world, like, roped off, basically. Cool. And so that's, like, the core mechanic you've described so far. Yeah. What sort of crazy shit gets thrown on top of that? Is there teleporters, So switches, far, literally doors? nothing. That surprises Wait, me. Wait, and this involves sausages brilliant. how? What was that? You're you're just cooking sausages. Up. Yeah, <laughs> it's literally it's a it. sausage yeah, cooking game. Yeah, it's a puzzle game. game. Yep. It's a, spa- a spatial puzzle game with super simple mechanics that just beat you over the head with how complicated they can be like, in what seems like a super bird. simple context. Oh, uh, that makes me think of a uh, human resource machine. Did you ever try that, Keith? No. You would probably Human Resource like Machine it. was not a simple game with simple mechanics. It was programming. Yeah, that, that yeah. was the idea. Is everyone says that that game was basically supposed to teach you how to program. 
Yeah, Not I really. That one it teaches you how to it. program an assembly specifically. Yeah. <laughs> so, like, yeah, I treated it, very different skill. I treated it as a puzzle game, and I enjoyed it as a puzzle game. <laughs> I enjoyed it as a puzzle game, too, but I was just like, I took a whole class on how to play this game already. <laughs> uh, I, I actually, it was actually, for me, like, really kind of simple until we got to the later levels, and I was like, oh my god. Who yeah, the last, the last who would couple be able plus to do bonus these? missions were like, I don't, I, I gave up on they that were so one hard. through. Well, I actually yeah. played another game I, that I gave me that game exact all feeling. all the way through. Like that thought of, like, I, I took know. a class already for this, because you guys, have you guys played Glitch Space yet? <laughs> No. no, I hear that's also programming. Nope. Yeah, games. Yeah, but I think that it's probably a, a solid tier below games like a like a human re resource machine. What do you mean by tier below? Isn't it shittier? In quality. Or what? <laughs> oh. Well, <laughs> that sounds I would unpromising. Say anything, anything made by like Tomorrow Comp uh, Corporation is generally of like some level of quality. Yeah, to like I've never with. played Human Resource Machine, but I have a certain degree of faith in it based on the previous two games they made, World, World of Goo, Goo and yeah. Little yeah. Inferno. I really, really like. Uh, you liked Little Inferno, I think. Bert, yeah. you said you hated it. I hate Little Inferno, and I didn't like uh, World of Goo all that much either. But I definitely loved um, That's a Human shame. Resource Machine. I I guess I would say that. Um, uh, Little Inferno is a little basic, but I really liked World of Goo. I thought that was solid. Yeah, maybe we've, I we've, we've had a few games that tried to do these programming gimmicks so far. It's like there's the uh, there's there's the uh, what's it called? Uh, human resource machine, and then there's a game I think called Hack and Slash, where you had like a USB for, for a oh, sword, and you could yeah. like alter a weapon. Yeah. you could alter enemy AIs basically and stuff like that. Yeah, and. The glitch oh, space, space is weird because it tries to portal that. Uh, it takes tries to take that formula and put it on portal, basically like a th like a first person platformer puzzler, and oh. it's incredibly ungraceful in its impl implementation, and it's really kind of a bummer because what you do is you have a big world of gray platforms and walls and whatever and some hazards and red blocks that you can program with your weapon, but they use really clunky uh, options like move by 20 and stuff like that and you would like take move and the object and 20 and link them together physically like you were drawing a like a flow chart of code basically and you have to okay. do that from scratch every time mm. but what's really awkward about the game was that the entire playthrough when i played it was i think less than three hours long and the issue was that like a game like portal was similar like the first portal when you first played it for the first time where it, 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 it like masterfully would take new mechanics and introduce them to you and then com continue to iterate on them and scale upwards and like it had a really good structure where the first half of the game was every level except for the last one which was the tutorial basically and then the last level was the second half of the entire game basically where it used all those mechanics into a, in a, and turned it into a climax and combined them in new and interesting I ways. I remember you complaining about this yeah. Yeah glitch space and instead never, like developed just, its ideas just it'll just it'll just throw a mechanic at you and you'll use it twice yeah. that's like the most clever right. thing that's in the game opposite of how oh, puzzle right. games yeah, you were should be designed yeah that that almost reminds me of um oh let's see legend of zelda where you acquire a new weapon and you use it throughout the temple and you might use it later on in certain instances but unless right. they had that temple that involved all of them in intricate ways it just didn't yeah that's one thing uh, i did not like about that's zelda definitely games. true about at the zelda. very least in zelda games uh your special gimmick item that was required for a specific dungeon is usually useful in other dungeons yeah, Not like yeah, rarely, like every once puzzles. in a while. It well, like, like, you, which, like, you like learn to shoot a fireball, and it's like required for one dungeon, but fireballs are always useful and stuff like that. Like boomerang yeah. is god. Like boomerang is your god, no matter what dungeon you get it in. It's and then so you get useful. megaton hammer, which is shit here. Useless. Yeah. <laughs> well, yeah, but like, so there are a lot of Zeldas that always have like one or two items that are like, eh, fuck it, I don't need it for the rest of the game. But like, Twilight Princess was pretty bad, and Skyward Sword was pretty bad about like items that I don't fucking need ever. The bow Thanks. is usually very useful. Yeah, well, go like figure. every dungeon. Like if it's a straight up weapon more than a puzzle thing, then it's going to be useful all the time for pretty much everything. Yeah, like but I But if I it's would, like Dolph's mirror, then I would say, it's uh, not useful. <laughs> you know what's uh, like the Oracle of Ages and Seasons were pretty good about like items not being useless. But I would say the 2D ones were better at being puzzle games. Yeah. Definitely. 
Because probably true, because you yeah. could see everything better too. Uh, yes, yes, you could. Yeah. Like I've well, heard people have complained nothing about but like a lot of. I've like, heard okay. nothing but I guess, damn it. praise. <laughs> Good job. Yeah. Uh, when everyone comes back, there'll be one additional voice now. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I've heard nothing but extreme praise about the newest Zelda. Uh, the the newest like kind of top down one. What is Link it called? Between Worlds. Link, Link, yeah. Oh, Link Between Worlds is amazing, fabulous. except for the one gigantic flaw, which is all of your items are rented. People like that though. I heard I, that was actually really good. I like, fucking I heard... don't don't tell me I have to run back to my fucking house <laughs> and go rent an item that I need. Fuck you. I went to the dungeon. I earned that item. Give me the oh, item. Is, it's mine. Oh, is Tom I Nook like, in charge of your inventory it. or something? Wait, no, you can it's... only carry one at a time. Is that how uh, it is? No, you, can... you just have to. You no. just have to rent them all manually, and if you, you die, have to... you have to get them back. Yeah, that's and, a pain in the butt. And if you pay yeah, a larger yeah. fee, you can rent them for a large. You can get them permanently. Yeah, it's ridiculous. Why? I, See, that I seems like make tedious. Sense. I don't know. I, that's I... the complaint. I don't know why they did this. <laughs> I, I think it would make a lot of sense if you could rent it, and, like, after renting Burn. it uh, for the dungeon, you'd, Keeping like, it? unlock it and stuff. Yeah. Well, not, not to, like, rent to keep it, but, like, you'd rent it for when you don't have it unlocked yet, and then you unlock it, and then it's yours forever because you found it, so, like... That's what I'm saying. Like, you earn oh. the permanent version. Or, like, yeah, if the rental was, like, you putting down a down payment towards the eventual purchase price. I don't know. I, I, I still like the idea of you unlocking it in a dungeon. But, um... It always was a quest item, or just, yeah, the it end was always of the dungeon, a big chest, or right? required for the dungeon. Y yes, yeah. it was always the fun part of the dungeon, was like, oh, what fucking weapon am I gonna get this time? But it didn't well, matter, because you just go to a stupid rabbit, and you're like, yeah, give me all the weapons, because <laughs> I, I just farmed for money. The rabbit like, that moved into your house, and yeah, started like, renting spent, your house I to you? The whole, I spent the whole half of the game going and farming money, and then renting all the items, and then holding onto them, and then just not, you know, just not dying. And so it was okay. Like just, okay, thanks, I guess. That was easy. It, 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 I just kind of, realized, it did kind of Tom Nook Zelda. Yeah. <laughs> I just realized, as, as a result of you guys saying Tom Nook Zelda, I, uh, after Has playing Stardew Valley... That I, I said that. Well, you, oh, I didn't even you hear you say it. <laughs> yeah. Shit. It's fine, you're Keith. It. You don't listen. It, it's okay. <laughs> I was reading somebody oh, complaining about a link between you, worlds apparently. and chat. <laughs> but after, after playing Stardew Valley, I've... I'm realizing now I would love like a substantive cross between like Animal Crossing and like a top down Legend of Zelda game. That would be really satisfying to play. I'm not seeing Wait, it. How would they cross over? I don't really want but, to mix like, Animal Crossing with any games. Yeah. Well, I've never played mm. one and I'm not inclined well, to. Well, Bird, you know in uh, Stardew Valley how you go into the mine and like the combat was awful and it really wasn't that fun? Yeah. So you're saying Imagine you want if... more games like that? <laughs> no, no. So so you take you cut out the like boring grind and you add like actual substantive like puzzle dungeons with like uh Legend of Zelda whatnots. Like I think I'd actually really enjoy uh I suppose having, like, but a... the whole point of the combat in Stardew Valley was that it was more or less optional. Yeah. But like it could still totally I be. I feel optional. like it is sad it just being the worst part of the game, right? Yeah. Like by everyone. Yeah, it's terrible. <laughs> yeah, it's pretty <laughs> awful. Not true. Not true. The worst part of the game is the fishing mini game. Oh, oh! No. It's just as fun as real life. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I don't know. I, I think the, the problem with the was... fishing mini game in Stardew Valley to talk about that game, I guess, is that there's no. Uh, uh, okay, so you get the fishing rod and you go up to a river and you cast in like to try and catch a fish for your very first time. Never done the fishing mini game before. You, by bad luck, end up hooking on like a um, like a catfish or something. That's like you won't really be able to catch that until level six. Yeah, the sturgeon, oh. and then the goddamn sturgeon. Yeah, and then like all of a sudden you're just like, holy shit, this mini game is impossible because it's kind of based off of your like skill level. the The better your character gets at fishing, the easier the mini game gets. What? But um, if you're, like, level 1, you can accidentally, like, hook a, like, fish that's designed for characters that are, like, level 8 or so. Yeah. And you're it's just, not, like, Does it just eat your well family designed. at that point? Well, you're just kind of like, what the fuck? If, it's, if the fishing minigame <laughs> is this difficult, ass. how am I ever going to, like, learn to fish? So yeah. a lot of people, <laughs> like, get kind of bad luck like that. 
Yeah, the, the first hour of uh, was just the, the first hour of fishing in uh, in Good Stardew Mark's Valley tackle. is atrocious. But like by the end of it, you yeah. just kick, you're kicking ass and catching almost all the fish with le- generally yeah. little effort. Uh, Which is fine, but the problem is that I, it's completely opaque. If you I, never, if you're level one, you never know like the reason that you just got your ass handed to you by this fish. Yeah, no, that's is because it was a level we, eight fish. You like, managed to just scare me further really away from this game in like four words. <laughs> Why? When he said why something, would, you said something like it. the you first hour to. of fishing. I'm like, oh. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> immediately, I'm like, that, that sounds, sounds horrible. Fish. Fishing is pointless. Yeah, <laughs> f- fishing is totally optional. Isn't everything optional in that combat... game, though? What? Uh, Isn't the entire is structure of that optional. game optional systems where you pick which one you choose to work with? Uh, it's yeah. true, actually. And yeah, farming could... is very, very satisfying. Until you, you can literally do nothing but walk around town for the entirety of the game. Yeah, uh, and get married to day and day. Like I'm, I did. I'm just yeah. really turned off Which by that weird. game for similar reasons that I got bored really fast w- with a uh, with um, Animal Crossing, which is that it seems to be a game about routine. Yep. Uh, yeah, yeah. It's very. I will routine-y. say it's fairly I'm... easy. I like Stardew Valley, but I will say that there is a cap, like towards the middle and the end of the game, where it's just like, wow, I've I've basically beaten this game. I just have to go through the motions of getting like all that to like happen, and so I just stop <laughs> playing. I, yeah. I hate games in which you have to re- grind resources. The end it's game just, is definitely which is why nuts. we're getting ready to the play Warframe sucks. in a few minutes. <laughs> <laughs> oh. <laughs> Where the entire structure of the game is a series of checklists for which thing you need six hundred of to build the thing in twelve hours. <laughs> wow. I mean, I that, like that is what the game is. <laughs> Beyond that, it's, I mean, the process of get. I, I just can't imagine <laughs> fishing several times in a row to do that. Oh, yeah. Well, I mean, yeah. I, I've done it in I Animal mean, Crossing. In terms of me with fishing in that game, I, I fished just to get the, like, f- most important fish in the game to unlock, like, stuff in the checklist, and then never Ooh. fished outside of that. And that takes maybe, like, 30 minutes to do total. Okay, well, that's not so bad. Like, I thought and that's across several multiple hour fishing adventure. sessions. And, like, I mean, it, it's just, like, you can also buy items that make fishing easier temporarily. So you, you can just, like, okay, I'm going to catch all the fish I want in spring, uh, and I'm going to, like, boost my fishing stat, and then I don't have to fish for, like, three in-game weeks now. And then you that's, like, that ends up being, like, uh, you know, Probably ten hours between fishing sessions, in which case you never have to think about it again. I, so I did terrible. all of. I leveled all of my fishing over winter, and that was it. Like, yeah, zero and to and ten. Winter is horrible. Yeah, there is nothing to do in winter. It's like winter. All right, winter is, I, is is in Stardew Valley the time when you're supposed to do all the things that you were not doing because you're busy focusing on farming. But if you're yep. too good at the game. You'll just be doing those things uh, alongside, like developing your farm, and then when winter runs around, you've basically done everything, and you have a whole month where you can't farm and you can't like. There's nothing left for you to do. Can you so skip you, time? You do what I did, which was like you could have just slept in your bed the entire season, which a lot of people <laughs> end up doing. And what what's I did the was point of guys, this? Sores. It's just to have fun. Like, what, it is actually a very fun game. Yeah, it's a very nice, like, um, casual, relaxy game. Uh, you <clears> see, I'm I'm always the, very story oriented, which is why I can never play roguelikes so and such. With Stardew Wander. Valley definitely has that in a sense. Um, what I really like about the game is that it uh, you you have like this whole town full of all these like people, and you can just like talk to them and get cutscenes with them. And I think the whole point of the game is just kind of getting to know like this person's like weird little digital village that he created and all the people that are living in there and what they're like. That's what I I like about the game is like exploring that and finding that out. Um they do but seem more worth talking you, to than characters from like Animal Crossing where yeah, you never want to talk to them much again deeper after than and most, most video game characters by a long shot. Like one thing that makes I the game like, more appealing to me is the fact that it, it at least has like a Minecraft time as opposed to like real time because like the, probably the right. worst thing that the, yeah. the biggest deal breaker about the routine element of Animal Crossing is the fact that you have to come back Whoa. tomorrow for yeah. stuff, <laughs> as in like the real yeah. tomorrow, not like ten minutes from now in Minecraft style. Like it's like I mean, no, you have to just play how... this game every day like it's a Facebook game. 
That's how I mean, you make games addictive, though. If you force people to make it a part of their like life routine. That's how I forget to play it three days in and never come back, and all my stuff dies, well, and then I, I mean, never walk to. Then my Tamagotchi goes in the toilet. <laughs> You have to also put yourself in the mindset of like who the demographic is made for and it's made for like kids who literally have nothing else to do with their sad lives but like play a game every day. They're so it's kids. Like, I mean, yeah, nothing. <laughs> yeah, like that's the thing is like Animal Crossing isn't, Animal Crossing isn't made for like 27 year old adults. Like it's just But not, those are the ones I you mean, hear from all the time. It's definitely not made for <laughs> like, little kids yeah. either. Yeah. Animal Crossing was like the main game for all of my coworkers uh, back when I worked at Nickelodeon, like they were sunk into that for longer than they were Pokemon. Wow, that's that's yeah. hard to believe. It's so sad. I, yeah, I, really, it's, it's really weird when your boss is like sitting in the lunchroom playing Animal Crossing with people, and I'm like, "So, what am I supposed to be doing today?" And the answer is, eh, they were too busy with Animal Crossing," so I had no idea. Wow. wow, I'm I'm more shocked that they just brought it into work. Oh like, yeah. yeah, I mean, game design hmm. studios can be really informal, especially when the uh, the actual work is mind-numbingly dull. I well, mean, feeling left out by Animal Crossing is why I bought a 3DS. <laughs> for clients and such. You were there, Andrew. I think I was. Yeah, pay to hire studios tend to have different cultures from um work to hire, not pay yeah. to hire. But uh, different cultures from, like, say, Volvo or Blizzard. Yeah, I went to visit a friend's house, and everyone there was playing Animal Crossing simultaneously. And from an outside perspective, it looks really neat. Until you get yep. into, like, but then, so I bought a 3DS and Animal Crossing, but then the actual experience of playing I mean, it turned me off really quickly. Are any Nintendo games through multiplayer? Yeah, you can go to uh, each of those Animal worlds. Animal Crossing has actually been multiplayer since the uh, DS days, if I remember right. We did play what Monster Hunter hmm. briefly. It, yeah, uh, GameCube That's had not... multiplayer though. GameCube had multiplayer. Well, yeah, the GameCube one had. Did the GameCube one actually have multiplayer? I know the DS one. You could uh, you could play with people online because people were like chopping down each other's trees and stuff. <laughs> uh, and I had a friend that was like super pissed because uh... some random players more or less invaded his world and uh, took away everything. Like all of his stuff. I almost remind. Yeah, multiplayer in GameCube has always been a very, very sad affair. Um, if that's kind of reminded me of that, like um, Fantasy Star Online, the way that that worked on the GameCube was that it just took your local character and allowed you to play it multiplayer with it. So people would hack in like impossible items onto their single player characters and just do like whatever. Uh, and there was nice. no anti cheat, none. Mm. Hacking items into Animal Crossing feels like it just defeats the purpose of even trying to play it in the first place. Well, I mean, you could like, do the same thing in Pokemon, and it just makes the experience so much like more fun. Like, yeah, at least in Animal Crossing, I mean, at least in Pokemon, there's like there's like gameplay to have where like that is outside of the getting stuff thing. But I feel like in Animal Crossing, like the getting stuff is like the whole game. So like, if you just mm -hmm. like yeah. skip to the end, then it's like I exist here now. This is an open field where there's nothing left to do now. Like, if I, like, I, what do I you think do? There's, like, there's certain things that are more reasonable to hack than others, like fishing and bug catching are two things that are, like, way more reasonable to hack into the game because it's just a tedious fucking nightmare where it's like, I want to catch all the fish. Well, I got to wait for a full year because I have to catch them at different seasons during the year. Oh, no, I'm not going to do that. I'm going to hack them in. Which game is this? Animal Crossing. Okay. Like Animal that Crossing. That could apply has, to a lot of games with fishing. Well, mechanics. yeah, but it's like in Animal Crossing, there's bugs and there's fish that come out only during certain times of the season and only during certain times of the day. So it's like, yeah, fuck this, man. I'm just gonna hack them in there because like, like getting like oblivion, fruit, it, basically. Yeah. Like, because getting fruit is easy. Getting like all the items you want is easy. Making friends is easy. Getting bugs and fish are fucking annoying. Like, I don't want to do that. And yeah, but. I mean, Animal Crossing, it's its whole other, like, it's a mindset that you have to be in to play that game. You need to be somebody who's, like, committed to just wasting, you know, like, a couple of hours every day to go into this fantasy world that is not your shitty reality. And, and like, do, do the, the same things. thing every time. Yeah, and just do the things that you wish you could do as a kid, but you weren't allowed to because your parents sucked. Like, you wish you could go catch bugs and catch fish, but your parents hated you, so they didn't buy you any of the tools necessary. 
and they just put it. <laughs> they just like gave you video game systems and called you. Or like, you an live idiot. where the only bugs are like bees and more <laughs> the bees. only bugs are bees. Where do you fucking live, <laughs> dude? That's a- Maryland, it was like at daytime there were bees, and at nighttime there were mosquitoes and nothing else. I, I couldn't tell. No, I mean, I never no. even saw bees and mosquitoes in the same place. They might have even been the same bugs for all I fucking know. <laughs> Cicadas, At some point, bugs, you would just want to have like a, a yes. mobile my for cicadas. <laughs> I feel like I'd want to invest the in like a, a net umbrella, like a mosquito net umbrella. Just yeah, for going outside. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if that's a real thing or not. It is. No, it's not. It just that's seems logical. Stupid. You can get you can a mosquito though? net. Yeah, <laughs> it's net, it's a malaria escape. Get a get a get a mosquito net umbrella. I should just wear a suit of armor and look like a damn Renaissance knight. Hey, malaria is no joke. Mosquitoes can't get into the armor. <laughs> is it yeah, like the number so one it's... killer of people? <laughs> Period. Well, malaria. It is. Yeah. Well, I'm pretty sure it's like the number one cause of death in the history of mankind. Born by them. Wait, not the Black Plague. No, there wasn't enough humans when I Black Plague happened. I think the malaria probably killed oh, more darn. people than the Black Plague. Yeah, it point. killed a huge chunk of the existing population of a small population. Yeah. Well, yeah. I, well, I think the Black Plague took out a larger chunk, like percentage. Percentage. Of the, yeah. yeah. A third of Europe. But malaria we haven't gotten rid of yet, whereas Black Plague has been dead for centuries now. But do it's we been gone do, for a long time? I, don't know. I hope do so. Do we need to get rid of malaria? Because every time I go Andrew. outside, I feel like I'm not in the risk of getting malaria. I mean, now there's that Zika White virus. Privilege, everybody. Among other things. <laughs> Zika, virus also, Zika virus also only affects pregnant women, not males. No, again, this is not totally, really, it affects everybody. Actually, they found that men can carry it in their uh, junk for six yep. months or more. Oh, okay. So let me it rephrase It gets into this. your bones or something. People who want to have children are affected by this. So I still yeah. don't see the need for a cure And they're yet. probably going to want to have hey, a big stake in the Zika virus. Because like, they're not a minority. No, just things. let them argue it. Just let them argue and with that. them. See what happens. <laughs> <laughs> Done. Guys, you just need to realize Andrew is a complete sociopath when it comes to other people that aren't convenient hey. for him. <laughs> so Look, it's not even worth I, discussing other people with I him. I watched a video the other day of, like, of African people getting water, and I was upset that they still had to put it on their head. Like, I was like, this is ridiculous. You can't evolve past the head thing. Like, I'm not going to even help you anymore. Your country's dead. Like, if you can't find some You weren't some helping way, them in the first place, but well, it's okay. I was helping them. I was <laughs> thinking about them and thinking how dumb they were, were. for not moving on. But I now like I'm the, really upset. Isn't the head thing really good for balance, though? Because when you're holding it in your arms, it sloshes more? I don't, I don't know. I don't carry water from one end of Africa to the other end. I'm not a, I'm not a But he has sap. a big stake in, in how other in people do it. Country. Like, yeah, he does. He's backseat africa Yeah, come on. Like, I mean, don't, don't act wow. like, okay, there are people in Africa who can hunt and kill elephants for their tusks, but you're telling me they can't bring water from one end of Africa without carrying it? Fuck this shit. I'm not going to help a country that has that. those are kind of different people, too, though. Well, I think those people have guns. <laughs> The poachers, yeah, they have sub submachine guns yeah. in there. I mean, I'm just saying. Who they also, they also might not the even be African. Well, yeah. in that case, no, I think they're African. I'm pretty. Certain I mean, a African. lot of a lot of the market actually exists in Asia. Like, so they're the ones that actually want the ivory and well, they, the they, they various buy it, parts. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, now, now white people probably the buy the stuff, but the white people aren't going to go out and kill elephants. That's too much work. We don't got time for that. We'll hire someone else to do it, and then they'll do it, and they'll blend in because they're not white people in Africa. Did Teddy so Roosevelt ever kill elephants? What? I just know he's like the the animal poaching president guy. Did he ever do any uh, elephants? And, and George Eastman, and yeah, of course, Probably. they they would actually pay like hefty sums just to. It, actually, people still do that today, where if there is an elderly animal. That's on its way out. They're like, you know, hey, but pay that's, us, you know, a couple, several thousand dollars, and they can hunt we're, it. We're that's coming from a uh, much more what? environmentally friendly place than it was in the previous times, where it was like a poaching no, back, tourism thing. Yeah, that was back actually. Then it was the, definitely tourism. I actually tourism. heard a pretty good thing about that, yeah. where the there was going in the aftermath of the whole controversy about when was it? I think Cecil the lion got shot by like illegally. Was, yeah, it was the black some, the black rhino is what you're talking about. Like people were oh, freaking. No, so, yeah, oh, right, it was a one. rhino. Or, or yeah. was well, it? So the case of Cecil the Lion was it was a protected lion that had been um, lured onto unprotected land. Mm-hmm. So right. 
that technically the lion <laughs> still was supposed to be a protected entity, but then because it was lured off, they killed it, and yeah, so that is that yeah, is that very one was bad. There. That's a very that open-ended a argument. Like, but it wasn't on protected land, <laughs> so that's, it's an unprotected dude, that's animal. It's like in, what? Uh, it was the <laughs> it was the standing right standing there. your ground of Africa. The, yeah, that's kind of just like saying like your car wasn't in your driveway, so it's free to steal. It's like no, it's still my car. Like you can't tell, steal my car. It's just like it's such a weird thing to say. It's like just because the lion wasn't in where it's supposed to be, it's like it's not protected anymore. It's like wait, what? right, right, and that was it, their argument. Did it and stop yeah, becoming a lion? Also, defense. <laughs> yeah, he was also like, I didn't know that you know the the they my his guides had lured it for him yeah so he's like and then he was trying to place the blame i on think the he guides. still got like 50 years in prison though like him trying to loophole really? his way I thought yeah that he got off uh i don't remember i'm gonna like, look no it up repercussions whatsoever yeah what was what was the name of the lion cecil thistle chisel to ray but uh um, i remember there was an incident like a year ago where a um conservationist organization uh auctioned off the opportunity to hunt a black rhino oh yeah and everyone was like wow fuck you you can't be doing that that's an endangered yeah, that, species that's exactly and it what, was, like, what was it gonna get into but what? it was like really old and aggressive and it was like super <laughs> yeah. dangerous it's like and the they last were like one it's left. gonna Maybe die in a couple too. months <laughs> and like we can use the proceeds from the auction to fund like conservation movements yep. and so they did that's something that and happens all the so, time because the older yeah, members of the family act, well, they, they very can't well, conservation I am progressive horrified idea about, though is that there are so many animals that have been nurtured huh on like in reserves of sorts and then as soon as they're released into the wild they're poached it's okay like, yeah that's so all that work uh, just to interject, <laughs> mm -hmm. I looked up the guy. No, was not charged with uh, charged with any crimes. His papers were in order, uh, and he's going back to work as a dentist as normal. So yeah, I guess he didn't get. Thank goodness. For that. <laughs> That's one of those. It's, it's a classic situation where there's a controversy about something, but everyone forgets about it, its existence before it's resolved, and no one knows how it ended. Well, yeah. I know that <laughs> there were a lot what of people were they really going to the stick town? the guy with? I mean, it's a Coaching? shitty situation, but from a legal standpoint, like, yeah, he really did pretty much have all of his papers in line. Yeah, I don't know. Maybe well, po maybe the poaching crime. Like, I, I thought that was I, a bad thing. I mean, maybe. I, I think the African government may have gone after, um, or whichever country that they had been in. I shouldn't say. Yeah, his African guides government. might have been totally His guides screwed. would pro or probably. That would have been people to go punished. after, sure. You know. There was like there's this thing I kept seeing there's a couple of articles that came out about um they always have those articles where it's like oh we found out a species we thought was gone is actually alive. Why the fuck do they do that? Oh. Why do okay. they do that? That's such yeah, a dumb a fucking secret. idea. <laughs> and they do it specifically like we just found a, a rhino that we thought was extinct in this location. And Don't it's do gone. that. <laughs> yeah, this, this, why, okay. it's like putting a fucking it's, beacon on an extinct animal. It's, it's like got oh, hey. diamonds for teeth. <laughs> yeah. I wanted to uh I wanted to mention this by the way. Uh you two living near Death Valley, did you hear about the uh shits that decided to go uh living near Duke? Death Valley? I heard about this. <laughs> yeah. Wait, wait, what? Okay, what so people? It's we like live a, like it's twelve like a... hours from Death Valley. Hey, that's close Look, enough. I, I live it. like I live <laughs> like fifty, sixty. So I might be closer. Uh, I don't know. No. Yeah. Okay. Uh, so there's uh, what are they called? Like I've actually like camped in Death Valley or something like that. Yeah, wait, vandals have killed endangered pupfish. Yeah. Pup? Wait, pupfish? Yeah, pup they're fish. actually they're really cute. But there's uh, fish in Death Valley. Fish. Yeah, no. yeah, in this one singular protected pool inside Death Valley, <laughs> only place in the entire world that they live, and a couple of assholes decided to uh, go shoot off the locks to get in there, uh, go swimming, skinny dipping, and these are like, you know, gross old dudes to begin with, so it's like, probably not any better or worse than like you or I, but still, <laughs> you see a picture of them and it's just, just like, ugh. Uh, and then they also like threw up in it and so several other things like that. Oh. And they ruined the ecology of the pond. Yeah, so they're were they the book drunk at or them. were they it's just great. like this will be funny? Let's just barf. They were they were drunk and morons. But uh, uh... I saw that, and then I saw at the bottom uh, the article continued uh, to say like, you know, uh, 
they're getting like 40 years in prison and i'm like good fucking good yeah I'm, I'm, i met some lo i met some locals when i went to death valley and this this entire story is believable i mean <laughs> like i don't know like there, there's that thing of like there there's that reasonable like oh, okay they did something really shitty and you know they should be punished for it but like this was no joke. They're like fifteen thousand dollar reward for whoever finds these men. It's like, whoa, these were just fish, right? And they're like, no, this is a lifestyle. How dare you? <laughs> like, <laughs> I mean, like, at these were just fish. These yeah, the same fish, time, don't though, you understand? Like, if if you as like a person specifically were like dedicated to the conservation of like rare and endangered species, and some asshole killed them by puking in a pond not even like an innocent mistake I, I but just being like a complete it. turd horrible. and i mean they shot off locks they ignored i think they broke the uh security camera several other things but like they very well knew despite being drunk that they were not supposed to be mm -hmm. here yeah that's so uh, many like, extra point, levels of shittiness it. like yeah yeah what the, like what the fuck are they doing in death valley anyways like it's not, no. it's not a good place to hang drunk out dumbasses I forget what kind of population you actually require. For some reason, I remember there being some statistics that said, what was it? In order to create a genetically viable, diverse species, you needed to have, what was it, 23 mating pairs? That seems to be a lot compared to the number of animals that are available for certain species. Yeah. More than well, tigers. We have, That's we why they're all like, going to die. We have yeah. the power <laughs> of genetics. Because we can make stuff happen. We can just force pr impregnation. So, you know... It's not that big a deal we anymore. Really it was about the diversity, We can do though. it with people sometimes, well, no, and I that's our we could, best shot. I thought we, we can't could do even it with get like, pandas pregnant. Not yet, Andrew. Not what? yet. The woolly mammoth we can't. thing is not well, a no. thing yet. Look, woolly mammoth is never going to happen because you need a male woolly mammoth to give his DNA and put it into a female woolly mammoth. That's how fucking genetics work. Don't put it into an elephant. It's going to come out like an elephant. <laughs> but, like, I, I mean... <laughs> Andrew's marvelous bearded elephant. I, it's no, it's like I don't, I don't want okay. a furry you know elephant. What? No, like that's let's, stupid. I, I want to see a facial hair elephant now. <laughs> yeah. uh, let, let's put this. It looks like an elephant that's like incognito. We developed like, our no, first ever there neck beard is no elephant. elephant here. What it just has that fucking stupid mustache, like the big, like big fat mustache, and oh, it just yeah. has the glasses and a single <laughs> monocle. <laughs> Speaking of elephants, uh, the Ringling Brother and Bailey Circus has stopped their program uh, regarding uh, the, the training of circus elephants, and they're all going to go off to pasture. Because, so uh, you know, people are after them for surprising. animal cruelty. That's pretty surprising. That's like their bread and butter. So no more elephants? Right, no more elephants at the Ringling Brother and Bailey Circus, and possibly Wait. other circuses. It's like It's like the whole movement to stop orcas from performing at SeaWorld, and I mean, I can understand that because orcas, I mean, their life is cut in like a fifth of what they would be yeah, in it's super wild. not healthy to keep Wait. orcas. Yep. Circuses are still but, viable in this economy? Not really. Can't That's you just, can't you just YouTube so, it? <laughs> so, uh, so, places like uh, Ringling Brothers... I mean, you can't... I mean, the, the orcas always like, weirded me out just because of how big the creature was compared to the size of the tank. Of like, that is like right, not any actual no. space. Yeah, it ain't gonna happen. And that's just yeah, their that's life. Just like, that's awful. I, I yeah, I don't, I don't think it's also safe to keep a thing called a killer whale, like in a, in a tank. Like, just let it go. Just get fucking rid of it. I don't, I don't yeah, want it. Yeah, that's why they had that. Uh, well, why don't they just rename it like a, a huggy whale instead? Because it's a lie. It is a killer whale. Like you can't. Yeah, those, those suckers are not nice. <laughs> no, yeah, get it out of here. That's why they're always they're wearing like masks. Pack animals in the wild, you know. <laughs> maybe it's a stereotype threat. Maybe it just, <laughs> just feels like, oh, I, you're gonna call me a killer whale, then maybe I'll just kill shit. <laughs> Gotta call it a huggy whale. Just, just, just rename them up. the Pacific Bandito. <laughs> It's just like there's a, there's a wanted poster for a whale, and it's like, have you seen this whale? And it's just like a, a whale with a mask on, and it's like, I don't know, it looks like all the other ones, I can't tell, like, fuck. If, <laughs> if Racco I raccoons it, like, and whale, uh, killer whales are the two things that look like they're already on a wanted poster. I think it'd be funny if somebody to turn yeah, in a whale so, just showed up with a raccoon. I feel like that's, just, said? Isn't, that's on purpose, right? Like, they do that. They have those facial features, like, purposely because they're all part of a gang that we don't know about. Like, there's, like, some <laughs> animal Raccoons gang. are running with the same colors. 
Is that yeah, I mean, you see animals that have like those little masks and like you have to understand like, okay, these animals are no, know what's up. They're doing this on purpose. <laughs> they like, they evolution, like evolutionary, like change their past so they can have little masks. Like, so are you telling me that killer yeah. whales are split down the center between the drips and the floods? Yeah, basically. <laughs> wow. Geez. It just, it just reminds me of Sly Cooper and such. You must have had a such. fucking wow. smile on your face in. when that went your brain. <laughs> He, he's been concocting that for the past two minutes. <laughs> yeah. Hell. What were you saying, Shell? You could probably see me do the mental uh, math in the silence whole, in the, like, in the video. Your whole mask thing just reminds me of a uh, Sly Cooper, the raccoon. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Being mm-hmm. a thief and everything. That was... Uh, but, uh, so I, I'm wondering how many more animal performances would be taken out. Like, I mean, dolphins, sea lions, uh, what other circus animals? Sometimes they do things with camels. Uh, are, are, camels, are camels really being abused? Like <laughs> camels Can look they? like camels look like they really don't give a shit ninety percent of their lives. Do camels have feelings? <laughs> I if they had so. feelings, their feelings would range from either eh to annoyance. Like so. their 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 feelings go from like who fucking cares and hey it's hump day. Like that's it. That's, that's their that's their entire. Oh, that's God, just a lie it. perpetuated by Geico. I, I camels hate don't give a fuck about hump day. So bad. I have no idea what we're talking about now. Yes, animals. Have you never seen the Hump Day commercials? commercials? I can't think of it now. I don't watch TV and I know what the Hump Day commercials are. How? I have no idea. I mean, I also don't watch TV, but I've also dodged the bullets somehow, apparently. Like, I I (laughs) specifically pay the extra money so I don't have commercials in Hulu because I don't want to be exposed to that. I'm I'm too busy making content to see content. (laughs) <laughs> wow, that is sad. You should go outside and watch. I'm too TV busy at making store. games to play games. I know that feel. Here's what's really bad: is that Hump Day. For the longest time, I thought it was just a reference to teabagging because the first time I ever ever heard it used was in reference to like the Wednesday challenge that Bungie would do, where they'd play against their audience for Halo. Uh, <laughs> and I only heard uh, it in that context for years, and never heard any normal people speak it ever. So I just I didn't know about the whole getting over the hump in the middle of the week thing. I just thought it was a reference to teabagging in Halo, which made I mean, perfect that, sense. That's okay. I, I when it I does. first heard it when I first heard it, I thought it was like a euphemism for like Wednesday is the best day to have sex or something. Like I thought that's I was like I don't understand. It was like it's half the week over. No, it's not. No, it's just Thursday's a random, half the week over. Yeah. Like, Stars Wednesday, are aligned for boning. Wednesday's not. Wednesday's not. I, Wednesday doesn't even have any humps in it. There's no humps in the name. Here's a, here's a debate. Uh, you gotta turn it upside down. Does the week start on Sunday or Monday? Sunday. Yes. Monday. I, no, um, week start on Sunday. Don't be an asshole. Week start on Monday. No, they don't. People keep track of what day of the week it is. It's, it's <laughs> all I know <laughs> is Catter Day. Wonder doesn't even know what hour it is. Where, where you uh, work I don't. because oh, sometimes bad. scheduled work Damn. days start Sundays for a lot of people. Sunday is an official oh, starting of the week. According to what? The calendar? No, according to how fucking dates work. No, no, like, no. The, the calendars. I feel were like made the distinction is the least important like, thing in the world. <laughs> it's look if know, you wait. If you look at it this way, it's so much better well, that you get I'm, a I'm day gonna look off. I'm going to look up ISO, ISO weeks. Hang look, on. you get a day off in the beginning of the week, and you get a day off at the end of the week. Or would you rather you only get a day off at the end of the week? You get two days uh, off at the end of the week. You don't get yeah, one day you less. Get, you get two. No, you get two days off at the end of the week, or you get one day off in the beginning and one day off at the end. It well, doesn't matter. That way. It does. This is about as interesting as arguing is... whether or not something's indie. Everything's everything yeah. is triple A until proven otherwise. <laughs> I mean, if you really think about it, days are truly a, a contrivance of humanity. I mean, so are hours True. and minutes. Also, and everything uh, else. All, all and things podcasts. Time. Yeah. I wonder. Yeah. I would weekdays, love to see weekdays if, according to the ISO standard. It starts uh, Monday is one. Therefore, week starts with Monday. I mean, who who okay. are they, and what gives them the authority to choose what For day is starting? The International Standards Organization. I think International they... what? They're not a universal standard, so fuck them. If the For universe doesn't follow universe, that policy, you can't have a universal a calendar. One planet to another. You don't need a universe. But there will be universe. seven days in the week on a universal calendar. Bullshit. Exactly. We will, we, we will figure it out when we get to other planets, and we'll figure out how to make a calendar for the other planets. 
when a universal yeah, standard of time because is dates made, are always terrible. <laughs> I don't believe in anything that's only Earth related. That's garbage. There's a whole universe out there. You make a standard for the universe, or you shut the fuck up. Yeah, that's where you get the start from Star Trek that idea. no one ever bothers to learn is, because it sucks to, to deal the thing with. Is un- time the is relative of, on a universal uh, scale, so how do you make well, a universal yeah. standard time? Yeah, the Blow problem everything is, down. like, a day is dis- is just distinguished based on our own Earth's rotation, and then a year is merely the orbit no, when, yeah, we just when, yeah we just arbitrarily split everything up and into weeks, weeks and months are yeah, just like a pizza. Made up. Yeah, yes. Well, Our time the is months, a pizza. The yeah, day is a pizza with, with the moon's a phases boring, too. Boring pizza. <laughs> yeah, but we don't even use a lunar calendar anymore, <laughs> so uh, it doesn't like really I, line up. I, I mean, I that's see the like origin though. So yeah, that's kind of the where they got the so, idea. So days and hours and time mean nothing because they're not a universal standard. They're just they're only specific to Earth. And that's a very terrible way. Are of all relatives? Which is one hundred percent of intelligent life that we useless, communicate though? with. No, we can go to other planets and communicate with them because we would be the only all right, other planets. Hello, Russ. All right, Andrew, you can go talk to Mars. I am we'll, now talking we'll tell to you, you the Russ say anything, on Mars. Right? I tried yesterday, but no one called back. They were so close, <laughs> and I was like, "Yo, can someone please respond?" And they were like, "Nah." You just and gotta shout louder. <laughs> That actually reminds me, uh, their scientists have been making an effort to make contact with aliens by sending a signal at supernovas as they're occurring, or at least as they believe they're occurring, so that should another species look at that same cosmic occurrence and be like, oh, look at this, our signal would get to them at about the same time, maybe a little thought. bit later. But wouldn't the energies of the supernova utterly eradicate the, um, our signal? Also, what are they saying? What... Chances are they probably already thought of that, and we're too dumb. I mean, to they usually know the do. specifics. <laughs> like, I mean, like, it would be like a signal. Really hard to associated... believe. I, I don't know unless it's coming directly through the opposite <laughs> side. I don't know. Yeah, I, I'm just, I'm just imagining the message sent is like, "Whoa, did you see? Did you guys see that? <laughs> Check out this neat <laughs> shit here." Or no, like this the is, a- is the sun. Yeah, then the aliens <laughs> like, who the, "Who the fuck said that?" <laughs> At some point, you're into problems with how long it takes to transmit inv- information versus how long, like lifespans are. Well, also well, we they- can't even send a signal into space that um, won't deteriorate into background noise. Yeah, but don't they also in, have to translate it? Length to get to a supernova. Like, even if we send something, they have to translate that into audible. Well, they don't need yeah. to know like- what the message says. They just need to have a. A signal that's distinguishable from background noise. That sounds a really dangerous thing to do, because what if that signal was saying, like, all right, anybody who shows up, we're blowing up. Like, <laughs> I kind of wouldn't follow that message if I couldn't understand it. That signal's actually the kill switch well, for their well, entire species. I think, yeah. they have I think their point is just that the they same. know. Yeah. Just that they know. They actually but have I mean, something. Mathematics is a universal thing, so, like, the way you encode the meth- message, you can put in, like, you can encode it specific ways just that, that anybody can looking at the message can figure out how to decode it you know like there's the actually yeah. there's actually a it. video game where humanity is wiped out because aliens try to send a message and the message ends up killing humanity like just the way <laughs> it's like transmitted the yeah the way yeah. the message is transmitted <laughs> destroys mankind they don't, humans don't, <laughs> like they, the humans uh, can't interpret i won't say what it was because yeah. it's a big spoiler but if i don't say what yeah. it is then it's, then no one can Wait, know so was it just a massive energy wave that they just <laughs> you know that was totally the plot of star trek the save the whales one the wh- whales were just trying to talk with humanity oh uh, they were trying to call their whale buddies left on earth and then earth got messed up as a result well, that oh, was, yeah, that was an episode. Time, well, that was, that, that was the whole movie. That was, a, that was the That's straight San up movie. No, 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 no. The, the real example of, you know, sending into things into space that you shouldn't was uh, V'ger from uh, another Star Trek film. And it, it was it was literally Voyager. Voyager probe was sent off there, and it's like, why did humanity abandon me? <laughs> and then it came back as some sort of super menace. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. Why would it, it be it's... mad? We sent it on a free, all-you-can-eat buffet for <laughs> like seeing the universe. It, Why would you be upset it, about that? Well, it, it uh, gained sentience boredom. by like merging with another vessel out in space, and yeah, yeah Voyager it, basically it, crashed it, into space, God, and gained sentience. Yeah, but you get to see the whole universe. And Humanity doesn't get to issues. see shit. That sounds awesome. Like, ugh. Oh. Very slowly. I don't know. He felt completely abandoned. It's immoral. And... It's a it's stupid satellite. 
Like it can't it can't like process age and time because it's satellite. It does make me wonder how it knows it's abandoned if it was born in space. Well, it wasn't born in space. It well, gained sentience. It gained sentience sent. in space. So I was wondering how oh. it had memories. Uh, oh, just all of its data. Look, this is Star Trek. The plots. <laughs> <laughs> worst Not worst thing ever, Wonder, is a Star Trek movie, which is when yeah. Star Trek is at its dumbest. <laughs> and do you know yes. what the interesting thing is, too? Uh, based on, like, findings, it, it turns out that we're in, like, the first third of all sentient species essentially made by the Milky Way galaxy. So, like, we're technically one of the old ones. We are what? I thought you said first third. Right, right. So that means that, like, there will be two thirds more species that will develop after us. Yeah, sort of. So we're. So like, why are we? The, are you saying so we will be old when they develop? Is what you mean? Yes. Yeah. Oh man, we got. To, we have to be. The so we get to meet the cavemen. <laughs> yeah, we, 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 uh, we sort of have to be the forerunners. You know, I, I actually <laughs> kind of like the idea of that from like a story perspective, just as a person that plays so many video games with the what, that our entire goddamn four mankind's gonna get wiped out, but some relics of our past are gonna influence future societies. Cat videos. Mm-hmm. Cat videos. <laughs> uh, We've that, we are gods to jellyfish. Every society has its cat videos. The Egyptians I, found I, it I, first. <laughs> I, I'm just thinking, like, you know how there's, what, the Prometheans in Mass Effect or whatever? Yeah. I, I just Protheans. like the idea of... Yeah, oh yeah, Proteans. Protheans. Sorry, there's also the Prometheans, there's the Protheans, yeah. there's the... Who goddamn cares? It's what the were the same Prometheans in? I'm trying to remember now. Well, it's like, it's like it the Mass Effect in Knights of the Old Republic. The, and... what, the Prometheans were alien, right? Yeah. Oh no, okay. Prometheans are humans, aren't they? Are we talking about the movie Prometheus now? Because Prometheus, that those were the engineers that were the progenitor species that ended up making the aliens. Uh, we have reached games. the old story where all games and movies converge with the same sci-fi story. <laughs> it's so annoying though. Like progenitor races are dumb. Well, like they kind of make sense. The ancient well, civilization. Even Assassin's left- Creed has this story. Yeah. Oh, Promethean uh, is a is a character <laughs> from Greek mythology. Prometheus. Prometheus, Prometheus. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, but, like, there's totally a, like, origin species that is just straight up called the Prometheans. Oh, but I God. I don't remember what game Chat it was. Chat's saying that the Prometheans are in Halo 4, which is the universe, oh, that, or- which oh, is the universe that already oh, had the Forerunners, so yeah. now it's just annoying. That's, that's they're, right. Well, they're two? The Forerunners were called Prometheans. <laughs> no, yeah, the oh. Forerunners, like, actual race. It's like if we were the Forerunners... But, but they wouldn't actually be humans. called that because they wouldn't speak English. So giving them a second name, and calling it the real one, is so dumb. Well, no, well, I think I think for Halo, we st- we called them the Forerunners. Yeah, we yeah. like humanity called them Forerunners, but they called themselves Prometheans. But they it's totally like wouldn't the call Japanese... themselves Prometheans, though. Y- yeah, they did. Be very Greek. Because in the Halo the universe, everyone called themselves some bullshit word like saying Haley and stuff like that. They don't no, call themselves. No, that's true. Well, like, yeah, but that's we're not hunters, all, that's we're gatherers. The, uh, it's like, no, it's, they don't the, just replace it with another it English word. <laughs> but that's if what the... Call, oh, sorry. Well, if they called some, themselves Prometheans, it very well could be that they introduced the language to us. Sort of like how in Stargate, they're like, the Egyptian gods were actually aliens. Oh, man. I'm going to be yeah, so yeah, mad. Yeah, I'm going to be so uh, mad if I play Halo 4 and find out that's the story. Uh, no, well, no, it was... Ancient right, aliens. For, for Halo, the, the humans were like the seed species that they kind of left behind. Well, okay, you have to remember Ew. that, like, that the reason that they're called, the, we, the reason we know they're called Prometheans is because the only technology we have left over is by, like, the uh, Guilty Spark. And, like, that's what he has bestowed upon us is what they call themselves. So, like, that's, that's him translating it into an English word for us. But Guilty Spark called them Forerunners at first. Is why it's so annoying. we called them forerunners, and he said he went on with it and said, "Yes, the people you're calling forerunners." Okay, yeah, I know what you're talking about. Like he didn't go out and say and call them forerunners. We called them forerunners, and that he just went off of that. All his motivation was like, "Look, just press the button and kill everything." Forerunners did it. Whatever. Yeah, whatever. Just press the button. Like- no, appara- <laughs> apparently the Prometheans are a sect of warrior servants of the forerunners. Bam! I wiki did. They're not the same thing. Oh. Now that that answers so many questions, they're just not I the guess. same okay. thing. Okay, but now it makes more sense. 
So they're I was, still technically. I was just gonna be annoyed if they're just like we're replacing this word with that word because no reason. <laughs> so then, no. Pro- <laughs> what? Hmm. No, they're just even... they're, they're just a part of the they're they're a specific section of the forerunners. So they're just warriors. Yeah, they're warrior servants. So like Spartans, like slave army. Great. Yep. Yeah. yeah they, oh yeah, you're right. They are this. That makes them the Spartans of the four hunters. God damn it. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know, I, then it got dumber. The story is so. <laughs> oh no! It did get it dumber. It's, damn it. When it within yeah. itself, even. <laughs> oh god. Yeah, the I new, think the new Halo is awful. Don't play it. Please don't. I think I that's am, why that trope is so overused. I am is totally because... going to play it. I mean, Halo, think so about garbage. the excitement that you had with, you know, Indiana Jones exploring ancient temples and such, except you could have awesome sci-fi temples that, you know, Space are temples. built by technologically advanced aliens. And that often gives you, like, the quote-unquote superhuman powers that you wouldn't normally have, maybe some special weapon that gives you an edge over other mm-hmm. people. And then you have, like, the corporations going, we want this ancient tech. Yep. And then, I mean, yeah, let, let's... Just, I agree I mean, on something right here. Temples are fucking cool. Yeah, okay. <laughs> they're really let's, cool in science. That's the entire basis it, of Destiny. Is playing into, space yeah. temples. But like putting Dude. it to a realistic standpoint, why the fuck would we waste resources building a temple if we were at the immediate disposal of about to be extinct? We, like, we I don't know, but we keep doing it. <laughs> yeah, but why? But I'm saying like <laughs> nowadays we don't we don't build temples for like that ha- that house anything important. They're just for shitty religions. But like. You know, back in the day, like, Egyptians made them because there's, like, history, and they put dead bodies there, and things of that nature. But, like, well, now what if the we world, just... Well, what, what if they already have a temple, and the world's falling apart, and they choose to use that building, basically? I mean, that's lazy. Make your own temple. <laughs> Don't, well, like... I, well, you were just, you were just complaining about temples. it being not practical, and I gave the practical well, no, explanation. No, it's not practical, <laughs> but it's also less practical to steal somebody else's <laughs> temple and say, like, yeah, this is, like, what we're gonna leave our legacy in. It's, like... That's a shitty looking building. It was probably built like the fucking nineties. Like, get out of here. Yeah. Build a better temple. Put all your important shit in Jason's house. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I don't know. I, if I was if I was about to be on the verge of, uh, verge of extinction, I'd probably build something super cool out of all the remaining resources on my planet, so no one else could have them. If you got something really like, big that needs to be preserved, or you want it to be found later, you put it in the landmark building and not some asshole's building. <laughs> it just makes or, sense. Or you put it underground. <laughs> Which is like the coolest way to ever put anything. To lose it because, forever. Yeah, yeah, because then somebody finds it on accident. It's like, what the fuck is this? And then I don't think that excited. ancient civilizations put their buildings underground. I think that they put the buildings on top of the ground. Then the and ground then it either yeah. sunk moved up. or it eroded, <laughs> yeah. eroded over it. Dust. It's called deposition. Yeah, more ground just showed up. Well, it's yeah, not like but all dinosaurs it's a were little moles that like lived under in the dirt and like dug around and stuff. <laughs> it would even be better if you took a landmark but put the actual temple underneath. That would be better. Because then people, people go into don't the usually go to great lengths to intentionally lose stuff forever. <laughs> that, well, if, if you're you leaving put a, a legacy under a temple, I mean, if you're leaving a legacy, you don't want it for like whatever uh, dumbass totally can find it. That's totally been a thing in games in the past with like the recursive temple. Oh yeah. Uh, yeah, new old Anner double Londo underneath old Londo. Yeah, you put like you have a temple and you're like, oh that's well it's kind of boring. There's nothing good in here. And then you pull a lever and then like this real temple opens up. You're like, whoa! Wow, <laughs> super advanced. And Our then entire like, society's <laughs> falling apart. Like we better make a sweet temple. haunted house for explorers. <laughs> The, the I mean, decoy temple right. is all like fucking <laughs> short, Look, and it's you're... just like there's like four doors. You opened up. There's like a bowl of candy at the end. It just says like you win. I just imagine mean, the architects like I can't wait curtain. to see their faces when they see this. Oh wait. Yeah, I mean, like here's the thing though. If you're a if you're a civilization that's about to go extinct, you're gonna have as much fun fucking with the next civilization as possible. Like have you, you gotta go out ever... with a bang. Damn true. Have you, have you guys ever felt like guilty looking at mummies in museums? No, absolutely not. No, no. I I feel disgusted that there are hundreds of them living underground in perfectly good land that we could be using for parks. <laughs> I feel like I, I could have written that dialogue for Andrew. Like, I, I just know what I just know what's coming. <laughs> I I just saying like all all burying people in the ground is a waste of land. Well, I mean, True. for me, I'm more disturbed by the fact that. I mean, they were people, and now people are ogling them behind panes well, of glass. I mean, is some it, of them I, have been I, like I guess rendered into pieces. People. 
I, I think it's the like thing, the thing that's they represent. Being, I think the thing that's being forgotten is that these are people who would want to be ogled after death anyways, because they're famous. You know, they're point. like pharaohs and kings that wanted to be well known and preserved, which is why they had like temples built for their burial place. So I feel like we're doing them a service by ogling them because they're like, yeah, I'm so great that people care about me millions of years later. I'm really it's not like, used to Andrew having a point. Of years. <laughs> I, I was really I'm caught off guard by Andrew having a point there. I'm not used to him having a point that <laughs> doesn't make me feel bad about myself or disgusted with him at the same time. No, I mean, no, there I, wasn't I, even I one genocide in that sentence. <laughs> I mean, I have to. I know. I, I mean, in in response for doing that, I have to kill a child. Law of averages, but you know, like... it's got to be the law of averages. Well, yeah, and the thing too is, I remember that, especially in those like old civilizations, the worst thing that you could ever have done is to have your name stricken from all record. It's like, yeah, you like ninety nine percent of everyone has ever died. About a hundred years later. Right now. <laughs> I mean, also, let's be real here. A lot of those people were hideously as fuck, and they look way better as mummies. Like, so we're doing them a service. <laughs> they did, like, the King Tut looked like a fucking, like, the, the reject well, from I mean, uh, Frankenstein. Well, I mean, he was a genetic reject. He was, yeah. like, the product of several All royalty of was incest. fucking... That's what yeah. I'm saying. So, like, we're doing them a service by showing a mummy and not, like, a picture wasn't... of that 3D representation picture of them. They're like... Argh, argh. Yeah, like, wasn't oh, uh, Cleopatra actually... Foot. <laughs> Yeah, wasn't Cleopatra actually scoliosis. severely like incestual or something like that? Like, yeah, all, like uh, I mean, welcome to like 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 welcome to royalty. They're all incestual. I feel like she's I from mean, so she long ago. There was like she, no she reliable ways so, of having like, images of her too. Someone drew on a cave. Probably. I yeah, but how do you tell like, what drawings so are, are good or not? She just like actually, popped around the other side and was Keith? super hot again. Okay, Keith, have you seen bones with like the dumb like if you have their skull, you can make up a face for them? Oh, I saw God. bones where a corpse came uh, out of a giant candy bar, and then I was done uh, with the show. Yeah, I, yeah fair enough. I know what you're talking <laughs> about, Wander. So I've seen all of bones. You can actually uh, fairly easily make like a representation of what a person would look like with very limited resources. Like they they have to do muscle structure, and I mean you can make it up though. That. Like if somebody had my skull, they could probably guess what my muscle structure was going to be, especially if they had like I, I don't you know them. basic. That is our entire basis of trying to figure out what a T-Rex looks like. But it would be like 20% wrong, though. But still, 20% off of what I have for a face is still closer than, like, pure guesswork. That's your face minus a jaw. The the problem (laughs) is... I mean, like, you know, slightly larger eyes. 20% is a lot. It'd be easy for them to guess all of this, but as soon as you get to things like cartilage, it would start to cause issues. Yeah, you would lose all your cartilage. Yeah, I mean, this is your uh, nose. Who gives a crap? Yeah, I just wonder how you get the appearance of somebody like that because, like, you can't really rely on drawings, for example, because just looking at how I see, have seen art in real life, like, half of it can be super idealized stuff that's, like, commissioned yeah. by the person that it's of, and the other half could be, like, oh, yeah. like it, your images that people made of Jews in World War II to make them seem evil. Like, so how do you know which <laughs> one's real? <laughs> Or, like, how do you know if any of it's reliable? Yeah, make, well, that's why we have photographs now. The, uh, <laughs> you make a bad picture of the Italian noble that's commissioned you, oh, yeah, you're dead. Hey, and or hey, discredited. You don't that with photographs nowadays. Again. I mean, if you ever see how they completely edit models for fashion magazines and stuff. Wait, I, they do I that? Want, I, I specifically yeah. want the, I specifically want the human legacy. Right? <laughs> I, yes. I want the human legacy to be left mm-hmm. behind by somebody drawing humans as evil as possible. Like, that's how I want <laughs> no, the, no. the galaxy I to want, remember I us. I want caricatures to be the only thing remaining of humanity. Now, do you know what? This is completely, like, off-base and such, but do you guys remember Galaxy Quest? Yes. No. And, Never finished it. And how the aliens uh, so truly bad. believed that fiction was what our reality was. And they're yeah. like, you're going to save us. And it's just like, no, that was a television show. But they believe <laughs> everything was mm-hmm. oh, yeah. everything was the truth. Uh, that's that's the hard thing. Is how do you, how do, If aliens find us, how do they figure out what our history is? And how do they know um, they're not just running into like the fur affinity servers or something? I don't know. Who yeah, cares? Already having enough trouble stuff. figuring that like, out. How, like, how do you identify the aliens? Mankind? I mean, honestly, I I think if they can find a fur affinity uh, <laughs> website, they'd probably be able to find Google first, and then Wikipedia. <laughs> you don't, mean, you don't know the future. Just fur affinity. 
here's the thing is that we like, X out on the golden plates and send it off into space like God realistically there's my yif porn like Self-drawn, realistically OC characters like what is humanity steal. what is humanity even gonna fucking leave behind that's worth anything to a civilization in the future like a lot we're of gonna, steel we're not gonna have shit that's gonna be interesting to anybody they're gonna be like hey you can watch videos in like 4k whoa <laughs> Actually, you know, uh, you know what cares. we'll be good for is we'll be like when you go into a minecraft shaft that's already exists and there's like a chest full of just stuff in it that someone else gathered <laughs> like we are yeah, good at getting a bunch of resources and putting them together the, uh... for people to find later <laughs> The the fish people are gonna have quite the treasure trove when they make it to land. The fish yeah, people. Yeah, they're gonna be like, there's so much fucking steel and what? oil what everywhere. Are you saying Splatoon is canon? Like Splatoon yeah, is the why future? Not? Why not? I don't know because I don't want to be a kid now. Squid. At now. the end of the day, aren't we all fish people? Yeah. Well, I mean, I'm not. Shit. I I'm think all we're man. Pretty Damn, terrestrial I've been at this point. <laughs> we're pretty terrestrial. Well, just based on the so idea man, that we started in that his... area. I Bird mean, is so man he got rid of his ex corona. Time and water, our <laughs> skin would start to slough off. I mean, he has serious genetic deformities. He needs help, Pat. Ah, uh, and this is just a random Kevin with Costner lie. with the gills in Waterworld. <laughs> Why? Oh, God. Uh, Waterworld's <laughs> worse. Why are we uh, talking about Galaxy Quest than Waterworld? I'm just confused Sorry, why people have seen Waterworld. Old I, I shitty movies. I thought it was okay, That's the but problem. I was also tired. <laughs> You you I thought Ride to Hell was that. okay. <laughs> I'll never what? let you write it down. I'll never let you live it down. What? Are you serious? Compared to some other we, games, Ride to Hell We have a World of Warcraft passable. stream where he defends Ride to, Ride to Hell Retribution. No, I'm true. done with you. We're over. Wait, wait. This is, I'm wait, not happy. Is that that one with that guy who's just all brooding and like, I have a car? No. Yeah. He's no. Pretty, no, he's, no he's, he's pretty fuck you attitude as opposed to brooding. He, and he has sex his, with somebody with clothes on. I'm not okay. <laughs> yeah, that's the best part. I'm not gonna sex fuck him. There's not a reoccurring thing in that is game that the where very, they have very, sex very scenes where no game? one takes yeah. clothes yeah. off. Yep. That's like the, it's like I, right at the beginning. start. I, so they, they I hate it how what they do that because when you would establish a character like that, automatically I lose all sympathy for them. I'm Trust just like, me, Ew. you never had sympathy for this character, and it's okay. <laughs> because, the, honestly, you, the game is awful, but compared to... Oh, shoot, what was the other game that I was comparing it to, though? Like, there are shittier games than Ride to Hell Retribution. Well, yeah, they're called Xbox Live yeah. Indie Games. There's hundreds yeah. of yeah. them. Mm-hmm. Like someone who takes pictures of his house and reconstructs Five Nights at Freddy's in his living room with, like, God. still images. That's a real thing. Danger Room? He made, like, four of those games in his own I, house. I think it's called, like, Danger Room, isn't it? <laughs> There's a whole bunch of them. Mm. One of them was just called, like, Scary or something like that, or yeah. So Scary. And, like, they had bad titles worse. and bad gameplay. Road to what Hell Retribution really... or Night Trap? Night what? Trap? Road to Hell Retribution? Night Trap was amazing. No, it wasn't. Let's be honest here. No, it wasn't. I mean, Five Nights at Freddy's is basically Night Trap. <laughs> No, Night Trap actually had, like, things going on that were interesting. Like, you had actual, like... Like, what, a push. slumber party? <laughs> no. I'll say, night, I'll say that you uh, could... Night Trap had more impact Wait. on the world, ultimately. Yeah. Because the yeah, SRP. You, <laughs> you could control the world way more in Night in Trap. Game? In Night Trap. Yeah, it's like a, a slumber party that gets attacked by party. ninjas. <laughs> it's a sexy slumber yep. party. Excuse you, Keith. Ninjas? You always have to explain it as a sexy slumber party. But it's like the 80s definition of sexy. And that's sexy. Which is that some of them take shirts off sometimes and have bras. And that's And it's like, wow, this is pornographic. We gotta protect our kids. And they made the SRB. That's that's exactly the sports bras, even. (laughs) The least sexy of bras. Excuse me. I happen to like sports bras. They're not sports bras. I I don't have any. I know. Wow, that's a really awkward, upsetting conversation. <laughs> Look, I don't get to make a whole lot of, a couple's therapy. I don't get to make a whole lot of relationship jokes ever. Usually, I mean, go Bird to... gets to be the butt of them. Like seriously, just go know, to Nike. But they have like a fucking aisle. You played that one so well. By the way, you said that it could have been so awkward. So I commend you, Wander, on your or go to, go to Amazon. Wait, you, wait! I was the one that was like, I know. That's the happen. point. Just go to Amazon, buy some. They're cheap. I know. It's just that I oh, find yeah. it Wander weird loves that he he actually bras. takes interest <laughs> in what I purchase That's to wear, fetish. which is yeah. bizarre. You take interest I... in what I wear, right? Because you only had five shirts to your name before I bought you ten more. I mean, 
<laughs> I, I'm literally wearing like a skeleton onesie right now. I don't really think I can contribute to this conversation. <laughs> you know, I'd like a onesie. At I some have point, shirts that are like seven years one. old that I wear. Oh yeah, the shirt I'm we currently wearing is is seven years old. Yeah. What is my shirt I'm currently wearing? Am I wearing a shirt? Yeah, I am. It's just a brown shirt. That's it. I think I've had it for Bought like this six one. years. My shirt's Freshman probably year two polish, years old. Which was seven years ago. Jesus this Christ. one's probably about Wait, a this? year old. Yeah. I'm wearing a black keys shirt. Well, I mean, the other blue one and the purple. Like all of my t shirts yeah, come year. from all of my t shirts come from loot crate. And if they don't come oh. from loot crate, then I don't get them. Like I don't buy shirts. So, I have a lot of my shirts from Yeezy. ET has really nice shirts. Yeah, the Yeti's I still wonder great. how half I still wonder how half that stuff is real, because I know that there are a lot of it's like fan art, sometimes right. licensing. I don't know. So I mean, are they able to get or the you license? Or you got a T Fury for, it, for your day your daily mashup shirt? They're oh, a reputable God. vendor, so they have licensing. They make it work out. E yeah, I, like... tr I trust ET to have figured it out and uh, not be super sketchy. E Fury they would have been shut like, down. They're somebody... too big. It's like if somebody went on DeviantArt and was like, that's acceptable, put it on a shirt. <laughs> Some people did. The, the, joke, I I... the joke for mashup shirts got old really fast. Yeah. Yeah. Once it like, started appearing on Target, it was like, well, okay. A, nope. a, lot of them, a lot of them, too, are just like, okay, I, I get it. But this is not something I want to wear in public. Oh man, like, it's Han Solo and Chewbacca and the Dukes of Hazard car. You just mix two arbitrary Ooh. things together for no reason. They usually don't even have thematically similar things involved, and you sell it online. Woo! Yeah, like I saw a thing of like uh, Han Solo and Indiana Jones is the same person. I didn't get it. I've, it was really did dumb. I, did I ever tell you guys I bought <laughs> my first mashup actor. shirt on accident? <laughs> Wait, what? what? Was that? What did you say? So I accidentally bought a mashup shirt a while ago where uh, I thought it was a shirt of The Who because it had the drums said The Who and stuff like that. I'm like, I don't know what The Who looks like, but I like their music. So I was like, oh, it's a Who shirt. That's cool. <laughs> uh, I had not yet seen it. I had never seen Doctor Who at that point. And so as oh, I eventually job. started watching Doctor Who, I started recognizing four separate, separate doctors as being the four members of The Who on the shirt. And I realized that like oh. it was four doctors of from Doctor Who pr doing a famous pose from some photo of the Who, and like the and like the guitar was a TARDIS, and the drums looked like Daleks and stuff like that. And I had no fucking clue because I had never job, seen Doctor Goof. Who when I bought the wow. shirt. You were unironically a total <laughs> nerd. You're so hip. <laughs> I had I accidentally had Doctor Who merchandise before I'd ever seen Doctor Who. <laughs> I still have to. I, I still have to give you your Dark Souls T-shirt. I have. Why do I have a Dark? Like dark why do I have a Dark point, Souls T-shirt? At this point, it's tainted. Did Don't it come in like a loot crate or something? <laughs> no, I got it from when I went to Sac Anime. Oh shit! And, that was like a year yeah, ago. Yeah, I got it. Like, and I keep forgetting to send it to you because, <laughs> like, I, I I open my cabinet where it's sitting and I look at it. And I'm like, oh yeah, I gotta send that to Keith. And then I close my cabinet and I forget it exists. <laughs> I was about to ask, just like, don't you live down the street? And then I forgot Keith actually does not live in the same town no. anymore. No, he, I live like a, an hour away. Yeah, if he actually like was coming over to make videos like he used to, I would have just given it to him like years ago. But you know, like, well, less than a year a, ago. A, a year ago, basically, it's almost been a year. Yeah. Well, Is you two that... can talk about your chores on another podcast. <laughs> <laughs> we gotta get back to talking about media. Yeah, um, sweet, sweet yeah, media. Got released today. Who's going to be playing that? That did. I, I want to, but I'm waiting until uh, I actually have people to play and stream with. Because right. I feel week. like I'd burn out if I played it alone. Mm -hmm. I just, for me, it's a mashup of every of multiple genres I don't care about. And so it's not, I don't, I don't have much interest in it. I enjoy it mostly to play with friends. I don't think it's the kind of game that I play normally. But, like, it's really enjoyable to just say load up the usual category day crew and do like a a long session of overwatch seems a lot yeah. more like action uh platforming mm -hmm. like intensive compared to things like league of legends and whatnot well it's not even oh, yeah. Nova, really it's it's more of an arena shooter yeah it, like, it, i mean it, it, looks, it looks more like tf2 or anything else it is yeah it's just tf2 yeah and yep. i don't like tf2 at all yeah i tried yeah 
I'm a huge fan of TF2, so by extension, I've been a huge fan of Overwatch, and I'm not able to play it for a little while. I, the, the most enjoyment I got out of TF2 was it. playing as an engineer and trying to find really dickish places to put a turret. <laughs> Yeah. I've, so I've been everywhere. enjoying that in Overwatch. Yeah, There's a dwarf engineer, and boy, can you dickish people. Uh, that, that's <laughs> just you in a nutshell. You love your dwarves. He does. <laughs> yeah. It's, it's <laughs> because he looks like one. That sounds like a fetish problem. <laughs> Every like, time I've seen him oh, wander, wander you and your he's dwarves. always just like quickly shoving a battle axe. Like, oh, what was this? I don't, I don't have a battle axe on me right now. I mean, if he doesn't have a battle axe, he can't be a dwarf. It's the it's the law. Exactly, exactly. So, he needs, he needs so that's why he's axe. not a dwarf. Otherwise, he'll lose his papers and they'll kick him out of the country. Wow, huh. that is that's, that's a really harsh mountain. Wow, that's <laughs> fucking brutal, man. What's Did Andrew odd, though, come up with that policy? That, that in his dreams, he's usually an orc. What in his dreams? <laughs> Let's, le let's learn about Wander Whoa, Dreams. Okay, Why would you be an about orc? Some wander dreams. That's like the worst <laughs> class to ever, or race to ever be, an orc. What is this orc oh, doing in his Wander Dreams? Apparently <laughs> hanging out with what dwarves. Is, yeah, what's Wander Dwarf like? What's he, what's he do? I always what's play, I always play D&D &D as, as an orc, so I didn't have to talk to people. <laughs> wow, fair amount of pillage sounds like something is about to happen when podcast turns off. <laughs> what? Except but no sports bra, so that's not going to happen. Yeah, no. No <laughs> sports bra. <laughs> you can't pull it anything. Unless it's a sports bra, that's great. <laughs> Jesus yeah, Christ. We have these, when he has these Dungeons the and Dragons are not safe. dreams, supposedly I'm an elf, which I find nice. I love elves. They're my favorite, so. This is getting way too personal. Yeah, this is getting <laughs> no, too personal. That's why I'm loving it. Like, just, it's just being, it doesn't get weird until we find the right costumes. Before. Yeah, it's being cut off right before that part where it's like, and this is something we do every night. <laughs> <laughs> well, she puts on her her mithril sports bra. <laughs> Plus 10 to support. <laughs> oh, to support. Wow, excellent. <laughs> Support's not even a fucking skill. You <laughs> in what, though? <laughs> a skill I mean, in what? How, how would you know if it's not a support class? Because you never put sports bras on. So, you know... Support's not a skill in any game. That's not true. How do, how do you know Bird I, doesn't wear I sports know. bras? I, I don't think sports bras so much as support is constrict. Pretty much. I mean, I guess it's, it depends it's on meant size. to squish the boobs <laughs> to like nothingness, if at all possible. Do nothingness. I think it's that like would be a compact. It's like just short of binding. Pretty much. Pretty much. Well, I mean, isn't it supposed to just prevent you from giving yourself a concussion while doing a marathon? It's boob swaddling. Like, I, I thought that's like the whole point was just so you don't hurt yourself while doing physical activities because your like mammaries are too big. <laughs> How long do you think they are? Small women, though, like well, no, it can I, be I, really uncomfortable. I mean, that's some only people... for like the really big ones, but I think for like in general, over time, things just actually start tearing, and then yeah. sagage occurs. Oh so, my God. yeah. Tearing? So, uh, yeah. Well, I mean, they yeah, just move like, around a lot. So if you're like running, yeah. like that can be very uncomfortable and very painful. It causes minuscule tears. And imagine then... if you had like, like some like weights on your chest that just like moved constantly when you actually, were like doing physical. Actually, a lot of, actually, a lot of have, unexpected like... shitty stuff happens when you run long distances. Yeah, true. Yeah. Like the fact that you're running long uh, distance and that sucks have you, a have lot you guys right heard away. Of, this this is more of an issue for dudes, but where your nipples chafe so chafe so much that they bleed. What? Oh yeah, yeah people, 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 people totally put tape happens. on their nipples when they run marathons. It fucking Wait, sucks. Wait, what? Yeah. Are you kidding? You never heard That's a real thing. Yeah. They, they put the tape friction, on their nipples. The friction <laughs> and like the salt in your sweat, like the salt crystals, will oh, like right, basically tear salt. open your nips. Are you yeah. joking with me? Yeah, you, no? you can like, look it up, dude. Oh look up some. Yeah. Look up some bloody nip pics. It's right this up there like with having to wear special underwear to not have like chafing everywhere. Like this is the part where other like intelligent life would laugh at us. Like, humans are so dumb not, the nipples not, start ripping because they're running run for a body stops they working. Would descend, they would descend from on high and give us a better solution. Like, getting rid of nipples on men. So what or I'm hearing is that even running. aliens hate CrossFit. They, they would just have to make it so that <laughs> yeah. when, like, genetically a baby begins to form, they don't start female and divert to male. As all of you were women once. Dun, dun, dun. <laughs> not for me. Not me. <laughs> what what kind of reaction is that? <laughs> I, I mean, I my reaction was going to be once. 
But I, I like <laughs> not me as a reaction to Yeah, I, I started out as a miscarriage and then you turned know, into a baby. That is a <laughs> tumble arena saying I've never heard before. You all started as women. Wow. Wait, I would wow. I would probably be really arrogant to other women if that was like I an know. argument used. Like you all start out as women. Why well, don't get the rights as women? I don't how come I can't call the women babes? Like that's unfair. I was a woman once. <laughs> like, it doesn't really matter to me. It's just a matter of like realizing now. Never heard that argument before. Not that it matters. No, Wait, does I, that it's mean, not a good I, argument. I, what I context? Like a guy's gonna go into a bathroom and say we were all women once. <laughs> <laughs> Target, you can. That's like saying like I'm surprised I never heard the argument that like because I don't know. Man, you see a lot of that like drivel come through Reddit and stuff, and it's like, all right, I'm going. Oh, well, to that's because Reddit is fucking atrocious. Oh yeah, and, and yeah. especially about like feminism. Like, oh yeah, uh, <laughs> it, it, this was surely about nipples. That's just why they're there. <laughs> I suppose men can still lactate though if they become overweight enough or take yeah. Or take I mean, hormones? Rick. Is that what you're gonna say? Yeah, like here's I, I my. I've so. never heard of that. I heard of it from Fight Club, and that's about it. Like yeah. I don't. I don't understand why breasts have to have weight to them. I don't get that. Uh, because they have mass. What are you going to fill them with? Uh, well, no, I'm saying, that's... like, they make sense to have mass once they start developing, like, lactating. You know, once you uh, get pregnant, then it makes Andrew, sense for breasts to have mass. That's actually a very but, good point. But Humans but are the is. only... Yeah, but why Humans would are the only yeah, mammals actually... that have permanently engorged breasts. Yeah. That's true. That makes no sense. Uh, right, right, because... Well, no, what yeah. about, like, monkeys? I don't mean, they? It is. Uh, there are there are at least uh, there are, there's at least counter arguments. Like there's counter points. That are, there being tons that don't work that way at least. Right, right. Because I, I mean, if you notice, mammals like you know dogs and pigs and such. Yeah, only when they start. Well, developing. no, like a dog can totally have like engorged teats. Only yeah, well, they were yeah pregnant. but I had like, a dog, dog and it did not have like twelve breasts hanging off it all the time. Don't you notice <laughs> that? That's what we're saying. Yeah. <laughs> So you notice that after a female dog has been pregnant and the pups have been weaned and whatnot, they're, I mean, they're still, like, sticking out, but not, their, like, stomach itself is flat. So... I don't stare at a whole lot of pregnant dogs, I'll admit, you, or post-pregnant I mean, usually, dogs. Usually you don't see post-pregnant dogs. dogs because a lot of people I don't really stare at dog dogs. nipples. I just, it's so weird because, like, even... But you even have a fur the... affinity account. Even in the, the scope of, like, it would make more sense, like, that's how the male body works, is that it's, it it starts out smaller, and then it gets big when it's needed, but, like, why would women's breasts, like, get to, like, fucking G size, and then, like, well, now you're pregnant, so now they get bigger, and it's like, why? Why would you just start out at A and then get bigger as needed? <laughs> like, like I said, it's just a weird genetic anomaly for human beings. I mean, I could totally see that being, like, a, an issue, though, for, like growth and stretchage like well you probably don't want to grow the average breasts. size now has increased by like several fold and well, yeah, that, that, i mean I feel, like, I feel like it's our fault right like it's us selecting yeah. it. it's a society yeah it's, humans are probably selecting hormones them. actually um what happened was with like bpas and plastic and such we're actually ingesting a lot of pseudoestrogens formed by decaying plastic Yep. Oh, yeah. Right. So... Uh, not exactly the same boat, but there's a town in, like, Idaho or something like that. None of Wisconsin. the women... Wisconsin. Wisconsin? Okay. None, none of the women could get pregnant. Yeah, none <laughs> of the women could get pregnant. They found out it's because the, um... Estrogen from the cows. Yeah. Was they were the fucking like sons. They're all gonna have cow babies. They, That's horrible. I, don't I mean... Know. No, they, they were drinking the equivalent of birth control pills in their tap water. Yep. I mean, so... in fairness... Oh, oh, wait, so they're not... It's not because of the milk? No, 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 it's no. because oh. the water, like the surrounding water, was uh, they so have, like they have contaminated. Find a way to filter estrogen or hormones in general from water supplies. <laughs> wow! And since this is Wisconsin, which has like a ton of factory farms, that's that shit just goes in. Are, and, are you going to uh, just tell me that like water is naturally a girl first, and then it becomes water later? <laughs> 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 no, just that it's slowly it's becoming more argument. feminine and making people potentially more feminine. I, I don't like this new water. This water sounds very uh, dangerous. <laughs> Aquafina, you have betrayed me! It's the, like, the I always, chemistry I always of thought it of is water no longer H2O, more, it's H2XX. I always, thought, I always felt mm. oceans were more of a male thing, not a female thing. So now I'm a little Why? upset. Why, because it's bigger? Yeah. It's jerk. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> it does that's... have a giant trench. 
<laughs> Add one more X and we get to be Vin Diesel. I'll I'll drink Vin Diesel water. <laughs> oh wait, did you guys see the uh, April Fool's thing the mountain? No, the movie. <laughs> I don't know. Triple X. Terrified. Yeah. No, he's talking Vin about three, movie. three X chromosomes to be Vin Diesel. <laughs> Uh, no, we're well, talking about the movie, a ding nut. Yeah, there's a. The, it's. It's. Uh, triple Gold X or whatever. XXX. It was Where the X's come from? I remember he was on a train and he did the talking. fucking splits. <laughs> there there no, is a specific. Trucks. It was trucks. There's a specific genetic disorder associated with that. I forget Klein precisely filter? what it is. Is it Kleinfelter or Hyper something? It's I where you have so. multiple X chromosomes or like multiple. X, like Y chromosomes or something. I forget what it's called. A lot of mm. it's interesting because a lot of sometimes when you have that disorder, like you're fine, like you just have like over like hormone production, and other times it's like the worst thing that can happen to you based on like what combination of like extra X's and Y's you have. Mm-hmm. Well, I know there are some into... people. Some people have like. Uh, X Y Y or something, and you can't tell that they have like anything wrong with them, and yeah. like other I think people it's like X X. That's bad. Uh, other XX, people end up with X X X is bad. Down syndrome. Huh? Uh, I mean, Down syndrome. I believe specifically is a chromosomal issue that more or less. Yeah. Uh, it's off one of the other chromosomes. Yeah, though. but like sometimes mm. people with the extra chromosome end up looking like they have Down syndrome, pretty much. Correct. Yay. Yeah. It's... But they're otherwise, like, fine. That's the weird thing uh, in that yeah. specific one that you're talking about. Again, yeah. I remember reading all this on Wikipedia, like, seven years I, ago and be like, cool. I wonder what my, her- that's about I wonder what my hermaphroditic fetal pig had. Whoa. What? Wait. Oh, okay, that's a callback to something you now have to explain. What? Oh, wait, <laughs> I, I was she talking about this the other um, night. Those words just yeah, came out. <laughs> but this is the Koof cast, and half the I, people involved have uh, them were not no, hermaphrodite okay. pig. So, yeah, okay, so, biology, 10th grade. So you've also been playing book here, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, biology, 10th grade. <laughs> Gross. We, we received our fetal pigs for the fetal pig lab, and, you know, we were all finally cracking open the rib cages, getting into their interior, internal organs, and our teacher was just telling us about, oh, you know, you all know the outward gender of your pigs, and, you know, find their... Uh, their organs on the interior. I go, okay, there's the kidneys, there's the ovaries, what the are those what uh, and there was just like these two things in between and i go um uh mrs uh, uh what what are these and he goes oh my and i go what what are they and any added pig nuts they're testes and all the kids in the class were like oh bang oh, that's cool and she's just like yeah i haven't seen one of these in the 10 years that i've been doing this it's a hermaphroditic pig I'm like, oh boy, that's pig. Yeah, yeah. So it it was outwardly female, and it <laughs> was. It's very possible that it. I mean, its <laughs> female organs were actually fully developed, but it's likely that it would just have had testicles that never dropped. But so, it, but it didn't have a dick. That explains so much about yeah. Andrew. <laughs> I'm just trying to figure out how to warp this like ham after pigic pigit pigic pidic. Shit. Piglet. I'm <laughs> looking <laughs> forward to seeing the footage piglet. where yes. Keith is just like he's like <laughs> thinking <laughs> real hard about it. Taking I'm gonna have notes, to name a character like, Hamafra Piglet, piglet. piglet. <laughs> now. <laughs> oh bother. I, uh, I mean oh. <laughs> what? I I'm upset. Yeah, I'm upset. I'm upset that your teacher didn't like call somebody. And was like, hey, we should probably take a picture of this crazy hermaphroditic <laughs> piglet. It's probably not that interesting <laughs> well, from a it, biological standpoint. It, it's what? rare, but it, it happens. Yeah. yeah, I mean, there are hermaphroditic people. Do we take pictures Humans. of them? No. No, I'm saying that, like, I would uh, want a picture. I mean, a lot of people take pictures of them. <laughs> probably would. Like, I mean, I want a picture of me opening up a pig in the inside of the pig guts with, like, <laughs> ovaries and nuts. Like, I want that picture. Yeah, put that on like, time. <laughs> I mean, I'd frame that. I'd be like, these are the ovaries and nuts of a pig I had. <laughs> yes, they came from the same pig. And it's like, that's that's a cool conversation piece. And then you wonder why no one visits. <laughs> well, no one visits anyways. So, you know. Yeah. He just puts them on the mantle. the Andrew verse, this is all consistent. I mean, I don't even know if I have any good conversation pieces in my house. I think I have <laughs> you like... You go get a hermaphroditic pig and turn that I... around. 
I have chickens. That's as close as I got. Hey, that reminds me of the chicken story I was telling the other night. Aww. But I'm not gonna tell it, because it was just about how in AP biology class we had to train chicks from, she's you know, practically birth she's gonna to go through a, you know, an <laughs> obstacle course. Oh, shush. It was just, I, it was just I, and mine was Chocobo. I named mine Chocobo. I recently learned how thing. to do a I'm not gonna tell exercise. the story, but here's the beginning and the middle of the end. <laughs> Uh, I, I, I mean, deep, definitely. The way she tells it, story. I know. Yeah, the way she tells it, it's a well, saga. Also, <laughs> at, at the end of it, it, it just it turned out that uh, everyone hated Bob. Oh, all, okay. all the chicks hated Bob. Fuck Bob. Bob was a snapping <laughs> turtle. Just to give you the context. A soft shell turtle. A soft shell turtle. Okay, my mistake. Turtle. <laughs> yeah, I, the, I. That's because all turtles are naturally pet. dicks. <laughs> I, I learned the mistake of uh, like I was trying so to. So you're look saying up that all turtles start as males. Yes. All turtles start as males first. I, I learned the mistake of uh, of trying to do trust exercises with chickens because I was what? getting tired oh. of trying to like pick them up and like, okay, I'm trying to like clean your cage and they try to like, you know, fly away or run from me. I was like, you guys need to trust me. And so I learned trust exercises and they're like, you need to feed them. Like if you give them food, they trust you because you're the guy who feeds them. I was like, okay, cool. So I was giving them bread. And, you know, it's like, okay, here's some bread. Okay, everything's fine. They, you know, after a couple of times, they were fine about it. Now, whenever I put my hand in there, they get angry if I don't have bread. And so now it's not a trust <laughs> exercise. It's like a fucking <laughs> mob. It's like, hey, if you're going to put your hand in here, you're going to put some bread with you. <laughs> like, I was like, damn, what the hell, chicken? That's like the monkey thing we were talking about the other night, too, where the monkey realized oh, that yeah. he was getting cucumbers instead of grapes like the other monkey. And he's like, I want grapes. Dang. Cucumbers yeah, aren't monkey, sufficient. Its facial expression was so perfect, like, fuck your cucumbers. <laughs> like, that's the thing. It's like, I was so mad because, like, at first it's like, great, they're trusting me. I can pick them up. But now they're just like, they'll attack anything that's not food that goes in their cage. You're like, how dare you bring not food here? Andrew and like, is Whoa. learning that playing God has consequences. They, they <laughs> also, I was, I've been waiting for it because my dog's been, like, getting, my dog keeps, like, trying to get super close to them and, like, scares them and keeps breathing on them and stuff. I was He's fine. Bob. No, really? and so I was finally waiting for like because chickens will get to that point where they like okay we're very small we're scared of everything but then they get to the point where they're like they're big fuck you get out of my face and so finally my dog I was feeding them bread and my dog like put his face there and one of them just ran up and was like back right into the face and he was like ah! <laughs> oh yeah, <laughs> yeah eventually, eventually those learn. chickens will be as big as your dog huh and that's and that's I was hoping for that because like yes they they taught him a lesson he will not put his face in your chickens anymore like he's just okay that's I'm good. done. Yeah, so like, Andrew hey. doesn't train his dog. He trains other animals to train his dog for him. <laughs> yeah, it's easier that way. <laughs> it's Wait, efficient. So how many chickens yeah. do you have? It's like Four. having a kid and then having yeah. another kid and having the first kid raise the second kid. Uh, I have and, four and chickens and I got them from a local that's called a broken Western household ranch bird. <laughs> <store. laughs> and so you it's didn't broken raise for that everybody called... but the parent. Works well for them. <laughs> You didn't raise them from serious developmental they're issues. They're absolutely adorable as chicks, and they'll fall yes. asleep in your hand. I got them. I got them as baby chicks, and then uh, raised and them. And you can up. find them on Mother Clucker. Yep, you can find them on Mother Clucker. Uh, Nacklewilson.net slash Mother Clucker. God yep. damn it. Hmm. Okay. <laughs> we've been and we've been the, hawking these chickens for like three by, podcasts like, now. Them in I mean, they were <laughs> in a podcast. Yeah, they were in a podcast. Really? Yep. Possibly multiple. They replaced uh, Andrew in a podcast. They did. <laughs> I mean, they are more interesting than him just hands down, so. Yeah, it's it's really fun watching them eat bread, because uh, there's, we have a one, like, residential fat chicken, and he, uh, oh. he likes, she likes to steal all the bread from the other chickens. I love so, the fat it, ones. It, if there's anything that I've learned, it's the greedy one that's going to get it. Yeah. Because, uh, because okay. With, He's going to learn the Mer pecking order. Have I told you guys the story of Brutus? <laughs> Brutus the rooster? Okay. Have I told you guys the story of Brutus the no. rooster? No. Tell it. So, my uncle, uh, a lot of my family members live in Minnesota. All of them do, really. Uh, and a number of them have farms, livestock, whatever. So one of my uncles had, like, emus or ostrich or whatever, but eventually got sick of that and decided to downgrade to chickens. I think he actually just, like, I'm not going to say inherited them, but he just got them kind of randomly. Um, and a bunch of them. Yeah, he, so he was just kind of dealing with it. But so he had two roosters. I don't know what, what one was called, but one was called Brutus, and it was a fat chicken, like big body and everything, Huge. teeny head, teeny, <laughs> like it was like chick chick head size. Like that bit of it never grew, never bothered to grow. 
Uh, Fucking weird. And <laughs> it was a weird chicken, and it was like it was Very a violent. nasty little sucker. Like it would attack uh, my aunt, it would attack my uncle, the other rooster, it would attack the other rooster, it would other attack hens. the other chickens. Yeah, the, the sucker just wanted to fight. Uh, he was ready for the cockfighting ring, and those, I mean, they, my uncle's But he has nice like guy. tiny little yeah. Donald Trump hands for a head. Uh, yeah, exactly. He's, I mean, not if, imagining if you a chicken with make... Donald Trump hands for an actual head, like some sort of horrible well, bloodborne monster. I mean, no, no, no. Oh, God. You know how you like, made those turkeys with a hand trace, and then you added like the little beak and colored it. Yeah, like that. Except well, for it's like case, Donald Trump's your, hands. Your uncle had to kick him to yeah. like, get so him off, you guys. The sucker was like running around, just like attacking people, because that's what he did. And so he comes after my uncle, who's like a three hundred pound man, like not a, not a small guy, uh, about as tall as me, but like much wider and much burlier. With the mustache. And uh, mustache. Uh, also, one eye and scars all over the place. So, like, I wouldn't want to mess with him. He only had one eye. Yeah, he only has one eye. You never noticed that? Wow, it's not. Was noticeable, it a glass eye? He's like the drummer uh, from Def Leppard. Does it, does, does no, it's like just arms. a dead fish eye on the other one. One eye. Yeah. Hmm. But uh, great guy. Uh, love hanging out with him. But <laughs> great uh, guy missing an eye. Yeah, yeah. He uh, picked up a firecracker. Was still alive. Whoops. Um. But anyway, so this, this horrible, chicken just comes... His name was Willie. <laughs> uh, this chicken just comes after him. Rooster. I'm at, oh, yeah, sorry. Rooster. Oh, chicken still. Yeah. Chicken, rooster, tomato, potato. Um, but so it comes after him, and he's just, like, walking around, showing my dad around the farm. And he hears it coming, because, like, the thing is not <laughs> making itself uh, quiet. It's just like, I'm coming after you, motherfucker. Get out of my way. Or, you know, submit to my roostery will. <laughs> my uncle just turns around and just casually kicks it. The thing, like, flops over, run, uh, backs up a bit. Comes after him again. Uncle kicks it again. Does, like, a backflip. <laughs> flies away. And, like, gets kind of the message that, uh, maybe, maybe not good plan. Well, and then, then your uncle vowed, you know, hmm, perhaps yeah, we'll have he, to consider he said, getting rid of one of these roosters. I don't remember the line, but effectively it's like, yeah, I think we'll have him for dinner next week. And he did. <laughs> He actually called us to say, yeah, we're having Brutus for dinner tonight. You want to come wow. over? And it's like, we've already left. But thanks for the offer. That's a pretty manly tempting. dude. Like, I'm going <laughs> to eat my awesome. enemies. Well, I mean, I, I plan to, I mean, I do plan to eat my chickens when they stop producing eggs, because that's the threat. Like, if What's you stop... are you supposed to do with chickens? <laughs> well, yeah, but it's like, I'm, I'm hoping that will instill fear in them so they'll make eggs longer. <laughs> So it's like either produce or die. I don't know. I, I don't know if they, they can. Uh, well, they are seriously bigger, by the way. Comprehend one or the other. Oh but, yes. yeah. So my story with uh, the larger one always dies first. Was uh, I had two goldfish and I got them when I was three. One was Merlin. And the larger and one, was one died first. Well, so Merlin was a hog. He anytime you dropped fish food into the tank, he would just shove Samson out of the way and start going at it. And we went on a vacation to Disney World. And unfortunately, when we came back, we found that the tank hadn't been um, aerated. The filter had stopped working. So oh, here shit. they were that sucks. slowly suffocating. And it was Merlin that was dead and not Samson. And Samson lived on to be 13 and a half years old when he died. That is, that sounds very depressing. The old ass fish. <laughs> He was. I think cancer finally got him, but... Uh, cancer? I was, <laughs> what? Yeah, that yes. was a depressing story. He died yeah, of cancer. Adults can totally get cancer. My rat died of mammary cancer. I think it's actually the leading cause of death for, like, domestic Rat's rats. Death. Yeah. yeah. I mean, you, <laughs> with Samson, he started getting a tumor on one side, but doctors won't do anything for goldfish, regardless of the fact that they're over a decade old or not. There's not so. really much you can do. What are you going to do? Um, you can't operate on a goldfish. <laughs> I know, and so he was like this long, or this, yeah. And About he... a forearm's length long. Really? Yeah. Samson's it's a, If it's massive. a pond goldfish, absolutely. Actually, I'm trying to think of what you do with a fish. goldfish in the first he, place. He was a feeder fish. You know those fish that you can get for two cents because they're destined to become food for your pet piranha? That's what he was. Mm -hmm. Pet piranha. It was That's just... the... <laughs> Last on to that part. <laughs> what? <laughs> well... Yeah, it's sort of like if, if someone decided to actually keep the white mice that you feed to your pythons and whatnot, as opposed to yeah. just buy regular mice. Someone's so pet pet not usually a good idea. Those those animals do not make good pets. 
Like I remember right. somebody I was telling it. a story about they how they got how they tried to make a pet out of a meat chicken, and that chicken oh. was like a fucking nightmare. Oh no! First oh, off, well, it, it grew to be way too big, and like it like it would like shit itself and not move because it was like <laughs> I'm not supposed to move. I'm a meat chicken. Somebody's <laughs> supposed to clean the shit off of me, but <laughs> oh, nobody oh. is doing this because I should be dead evolutionarily my brain does not know what to do so i'm gonna sit here in my Wait, own shit and they're that's what programmed it did. just to grow until they're fat enough and then they have no life skills whatsoever yeah no no functionality no, meat animals, beyond just meat, getting fat meat animals tend to be like they really cannot comprehend like being alive they only know to eat and sit <laughs> not wrong yeah. actually you, just, you kind of described like mr me seeks like yeah, they're not supposed much. to be alive that long and they don't know what to do now. <laughs> what happens to them? <laughs> it just sounds really depressing. Yeah. Yeah, well, food is depressing. I was eating chicken earlier today and I was just thinking to myself, like, an animal died so that I could eat this. So and you eat half shitty. of it and throw the rest away because you're not hungry anymore. Well, Bert, <laughs> you're also, like, 99% <laughs> of time, like, the time vegetarian. So, of course, you're going to have True. thoughts like that. If you ate chickens yep. all the time, you'd realize that they are destined to be eaten by you. Uh, yes. <laughs> they are destined That's... to be eaten. Hi, Miss I mean, Samson. chickens are probably a liquid commodity, so it's like, it's if I don't eat a chicken, <laughs> chicken it doesn't mean the no, chicken no, no. gets to no. live. Take commodity out what of there. Guys, chickens are a liquid. I just like that. Do you know how they've been developing a means to create organs for people? Oh, you know, yeah. Actually creating just I would, muscle tissue I would to totally consumption. eat farm-grown yep. meat. Not even, like, attached to animal. Just like, yeah, there's this vat steak. Why not? I don't it's care. Our, it's from our meat <laughs> stick. <laughs> yeah, I think I'd actually be more comfortable eating, like, uh, vat meat than, um, than, like, animal meat. Just because, you know, like, there's no parasites in there. and It wasn't mistreated. You can't mistreat a vat. Well, you can, but like, well, that's just say, bad for like you, you can miss a lot of things. I'm picturing Sarah McLaughlin holding up like a little like mason jar and being like, "For 17 cents a day, this mason jar will be will have its cracks repaired." Oh God. Uh, yeah, but the thing about the organ stuff is that's way oh, too that's much just money. Me of the, it reminds me of the island. Have any guys seen Fuck the you island? Too, Keith. <laughs> The island? No. no that, 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 uh, that's island. the Michael think, Bay movie, think, right? Yeah. They have homebred people well, that they could use. That are, they're clones of people, so they would reuse there their was organs. There an original movie. It was either a book or a movie or something like that, and then Michael Bay remade it. Because I with know there was the one with McGregor. Yeah. yeah. And was that the remake, or was that the original? That's, that's the Michael Bay. Really? That's why it's orange. We gotta save the island. You can identify all the Michael the Bay island. movies by how orange they are. <laughs> yeah, actually. He does tend to filter the fuck out of everything with a color correction at the end. Oh, yeah. yeah. I always thought that movie struck me as more like blue-gray, but maybe I'm not remembering. It's always, uh, it's always blue and orange. Yellow, that's just the, yeah, that's that's the color yeah, contrast. Too. Actually, there was a whole thing about... In fact, uh, I just googled the po island movie, and the image search is a blue and orange movie poster. Right, well, those right, are the two colors. Actually, <laughs> There's Jesus. a whole Michael generation Bay. of movie posters from, like, the late, uh, I would say the early 2000s to the mid-2000s, where almost everything had the blue-orange color scheme, like the Star yep. Wars posters, I mean, it uh, reads Transformers well, posters. And that was Scarlett and Johansson. complimentary colors, and it looks professional, because everyone else what? does it. She was? Yes, yeah, Ewan McGregor and, Sa and Scarlett Johansson. <laughs> Wow! That was Wait, the what? first Scarlett Johansson movie I'd ever oh seen. Oh my god! She did not so realize that was her. An actress, but she was probably blonde in it. That's why. Yeah. Eleven years ago. Yeah. Wow. I just she's been in a lot of movies. I didn't even realize it, but that must have been the first movie I had ever seen her in. Are there any other like female stars in the past ten years that have been as prolific as her? Because I know they like kind of did that with Halle Berry for a while, where she was like in everything. Yeah. And Lucy then they a career. Emma Watson. Lucy Liu. Yep. I mean, sorry, not Emma uh, Stone, I mean. Emma Watson to a point. Yeah, Emma Stone. I thought, I I thought Emma they were going to do that with Amy Thomas. Adams, but then I, her I mixed up kinda... Amy's. I mean, Emma's. The problem with Amy yeah. Adams is, I think the last thing she's done, as far as I recall, was the Superman movie. Mm hmm Well, I and remember Steel. after she appeared, like, topless and broke back mountain, like, it, she found it was a I lot harder for her to get work. 
Really? Oh, uh, who's I think the woman so. That was in um, Interstellar. Oh, oh, Anne Hathaway. Yeah, she's yeah, she's like been in Oh yeah, mm-hmm. with her droopy eyes. Mm-hmm. Yep, with her droopy eyes. Anne That's Anne the number one thing. Every time I see an Anne Hathaway she? movie, I'm just distracted by how in movies her eyes look like they're shaped weird. I don't know. I, don't know. Yeah. I, I always thought that I, I don't know what mine are. They get but... wider towards the outside of her eyes, like they, like they, they look like a a forward slash and a back slash. <laughs> hmm. Yeah, I don't know what to say about that. <laughs> kinda, yeah, it's one of those things just... where, I mean, there are some actors where one distinguishing feature like distracts me, but I don't. Like what are what are good examples? Oh, like warts. Warts are oh. definitely distracting sometimes. God, warts. I don't yeah, know what Michelle like Williams is who I was thinking of. Sorry, I had to uh, double. I, I like to fact check myself. I'm not. I'm not usually distracted by features really that much, but for her specifically, I think it's like I think it's like her bottom eyelids look heavier or something. Almost as if like like how old people's bottom eyelids sort of feel like they're hanging off their eyes and not quite holding on. Oh. Hmm. I've I don't know, I never noticed think. this, but okay. <laughs> I didn't really pay attention to facial features up until uh saw was it gold member? In um, um never you know the Austin of Austin facial Austin features. Movie? I'm like, what? <laughs> yeah. Well so remember the one guy the mole, I identified all of my friends they, by smell. Oh, oh yeah. That, yeah. That thing. So the moment the moment uh they had that scene with Moly Moly Mole, I've never been able to you threatened me with yours once. <laughs> with by saying moly moly mole. Yeah, right you threatened somebody yes. with a mole. <laughs> Just approach you somebody can't. with it. Dude, yeah. if somebody walked towards you like holding their like indicating to their mole and was like mole <laughs> mole, you'd probably like flip the fuck out. So for a wild freshman year of college, um, after classes and stuff and we were back in our respective dorm rooms, I would happen to be, you know, with AOL open. He'd be like, hi, oh, how are you? And I'd be like... AOL. Oh, yes, Whoa. I, I used AOL. Yeah. And so we'd start having IM chats. And there was, like, an awkward phase where he'd ask... Like, I had sort of figured out he had a crush on me. But then he wasn't saying it. And then I'm like, well, do you? And then he's like, yeah. And then he's like, where do we go from here? It's like, well, I, I've uh... never dated before. So I don't know. I uh, And so he's like... That's okay, you know, I'll wait for your answer. And then we'd like try to have like lighthearted talk and stuff. And somehow the mole came up. He's like, I don't know, you said it was irresistible or it would come to get me or something. I have no recollection of this, honestly. <laughs> Dang. I, I Does actually, it have gravitational I actually... pull? <laughs> I secretly I saved mean, a lot of it IM chats small from planetoids. Them. Is Wander a hypno mole? <laughs> Molly, molly, mole. That's the voice. I never expected a gold member thing to delve in, to diverge into a story about a relationship, but I guess moles are the source (laughs) of true love, huh? Mm. He didn't make the love guru. No. (laughs) I don't know. Apparently not. So I took away the entirely wrong message from that story, huh? (laughs) Yes. Okay. I'm the idiot. Enjoy being alone forever. (laughs) <laughs> I will. Well, the, on that uh, note, I the, think we the should. The funny probably thing is, I, I spent like over the Warframe. I spent like an hour and a yeah. half trying to like. I'm like, any moment now, I'll find a way to take this back to glitch space. <laughs> nope. Nah, nope. I think it's time to wrap things up. I gotta. It's almost been two hours. Just, just really quick. Yeah. I wanted to. I wanted to say something about how, like, mm-hmm. how that game specifically fucked up. Was that which game? Uh, Glitch okay. Space, the hacking game from the beginning of the podcast. The first game. I would like to the just finish the topic to really never bring it up we again. Talked about. Yeah. Well, we talked about we talked about a lot of games at the beginning, actually, with Stardew and everything. That's true. But with Glitch Space, sure. there's a specific thing is, is that it, it mimics the portal thing where you have a bunch of puzzle chambers, basically, where here's the place of the puzzle and everything. But like the portal gimmick was that they, they would change what was in the environment each time. Like here's lasers, here's turrets, and that's how they would recontextualize the puzzle each time. But in Glitch Space, all of the mechanics were inside of your gun as these different programmable, pr- programmable features. But they re- quickly realized, I think, in development that they couldn't actually handle all those different elements when they kept adding new ones. 
So every mm-hmm. time you enter a room, it completely. Every time you enter a new room, it just reprograms your entire gun, so that what? you only have like four features, and they just pick different ones for each chamber. So just that, that, entering a chamber, so just entering a chamber, you have to check like eight drop down menus to figure out what oh, features you're sucks. even allowed to use, basically. Because oh, the way sucks. the way the game works, it should is that be you... broken up by a zone. Like, oh, these are the levels where these are the things that you're supposed to do. And yeah, these it, it should be that way. But every, every time you pa- every time you beat a puzzle, you walk across a, a white piece of floor that where that visibly reprograms your gun, and then you have to check your gun to see what it does now. And the way it works um. is you you look at a red square to re- to program it, and it opens up like a flat screen where you'll make your flow chart basically. Honestly, and when, you, when you click somewhere, you actually get like a radial drop down menu that has sub menus mm-hmm. on it to find the feature. And even stuff like numbers, so, you have to you have to physically awful. find on a drop making, down list. That's awful. It's not awful. <laughs> making making puzzle games well is very hard, but it's so transparent to see like how good puzzle games do it that there's no fucking excuse for that. Yeah, like you yeah. Should, yeah. anybody can look at a like a well put together puzzle game and connect the dots of how it was designed to lead to it being successful. And yeah, as a game designer, like doing it right is really hard to replicate, to but it's really easy that. to diagnose that it's wrong. Yeah. yeah. I feel like a lot of game designers never show their game to anybody else, or never show their game to somebody that will disagree with them. Oh, oh yeah, no. Oh, yeah. I feel, well, I feel in this like game, there is case, that it was in early access for like three years, so they had plenty of feedback. But they did But like after a certain it. point, you just stop, uh, you stop listening to it. Like, yeah. that's the hard part. You like, tune to, it out. Like, to, to give an example of the crazy shit that happened in this game, is that in one of the last missions of the entire game, it introduced the idea that uh, suddenly you had an ID feature, which means you could add an object to your programmable field that was the ID of any of the objects in the area, which essentially meant that you could take your red square that you could place yourself and give and add the ID to a function of some other square in the references. environment. Yeah. yeah, and you could basically program it remotely. Like you could use like a remote you could use you your just personal got square like a remote control. Mm-hmm. And then that was used for that puzzle, and then the next puzzle, and the next puzzle's gimmick was that you had to use math to use to mix certain numbers together to equal the ID of the other one, because they would, wouldn't give you the number that matched the ID, so you had to make math make it match. And then, literally, the next chamber, they disable the ID feature, and you never get it again. Wow. And it's like, what Could were you, you not? doing? <laughs> like, where was this going? Like we're Painful. like you just made this mechanic for like five minutes and then dumped it again. It's like that's not. <laughs> it's what like a proof of concept, like, but it's but it's, it's, it's the one version. It's so transparent to like know how a good puzzle game would do that to not yeah. do yeah. that is insane mm-hmm. to me. It's not like there is no there's no. It's not like there is not a good puzzle game to look at and go, oh, I see how good puzzle games are made. Like yeah. it's it's just impossible to live in this void of like I've never seen a puzzle game before. I'm going to make the first one. It's like no. You just you're just bad and you should feel bad that you mm-hmm. charge people but money for this. But I will say it's very very hard to make a good puzzle game. Oh yeah. Thinking in depth about your mechanics is <laughs> surprisingly challenging. And that, it, it, that's what it's supposed to be. It's a puzzle yeah, it game. Should, Every, it's supposed to be hard yeah. otherwise everyone would make would make puzzle games if they were easy. So mm-hmm. And it's uh, really hard because you games. you both have to have good mechanics and know how to make them work. Yeah, it's like there like I played a game where and develop on them. I played like a weird paint game where there was drones where if you shot them with a color, they would sometimes attack you or something, or they'd be attracted to objects that were the same color as them. So you could shoot, you could paint walls and paint the drones, and that was the whole mechanic. And it's like uh-huh. okay, and what they did is they tried to iterate on it, and they tried real hard, but just the core mechanic I think was. If it's bad, not game too worthy, yep. <laughs> like you just couldn't yeah, get a whole game out limiting. of it, and that happens too. It's like there's so I played two games recently where one game couldn't it, it couldn't make their mechanic go anywhere because it just didn't have legs, and another game where they just didn't mm-hmm. go anywhere with their mechanic it's at true. all, like they didn't try to. And that's, like if, you're, both if your mechanic mm-hmm. doesn't have legs, then you're just squeezing water from a stone. You're not going to. There's get anywhere. nothing sadder than a, a puzzle game that had. Three ideas, and none of them were enough to fit a game, but they didn't oh. really oh. put them well, into it. What about last yeah. night when we were playing? Yeah. Uh, yeah, let's not talk about that game. We can talk about the that. Fairy next week. Diaries. Let's talk about that next week. Oh. We got seven minutes before two hours, and I don't think we want to go over. Yeah, no, um, let's just keep going. I'll tell you guys about the worst, the worst pu- idea for a puzzle game I've ever seen, <laughs> or p- quite possibly. Okay, have you heard? You guys heard of the Yawn Paradox? No. Uh, I, I no. launched it up and it quickly became apparent that it was one of those k- kind of money grabs for like uh like 
VR, like the whole gimmick was, it has VR, so it's worth oh, buying, yeah. right? Oh, yeah, I saw that in Paris. Oh, virtual reality, yeah, the, I was going to mention that. Thing. Yeah, the way the game like, worked oh. was that you, every two minutes, it would create a duplicate of yourself that replayed the actions you did for the last two minutes, and it would keep doing that forever as you were playing the game. And so you go through the environment, and you have to... It's, well, they, they, called it a sur- they called it a survival puzzle game, because every two minutes, another clone was you was being added and added until there was like 20 of you and stuff like that. And what happened is if the if your old clone from the past saw you, you'd create a paradox and you would die instantly. But the oh, problem so is that that seems them like what? that works. How is this how is this going to fail? Uh, none of the puzzles are interesting. There's no real spatial awareness of where stuff is. There's no HUD element that tells you what time it is in the two minute interval. There's only specific hourglasses in specific locations, so you can't really keep time of where you are in the interval to tell to try to coordinate where well, like you're trying to coordinate where the clones are and stuff. There's a very good so, reason why uh, Oculus games don't have HUDs generally, and that's yeah. because it's fucking disorienting. Oh, and guess what? If you die, you start the entire game over. Oh, oh god! And, so, and, here, and here's I, what the puzzles are: like it's hmm. divided into four separate worlds ish, but you have to do all, the whole game from scratch if you die anyway. The first world, there was a series of triangles and diamonds you put on a board to make a to make a puzzle, like just to fill in the square. Then there was one that was literally like the three ring puzzle where you like this, you make a, you have to make a tower uh, smallest the, the, to biggest and move it over puzzle or whatever. Yeah, yeah, there was one where you literally pick up a box and put it on a and put it on a pressure plate like in Portal, but it was just there. You just pick it up and put it on it. Like it was like stuff like that. And then and like it, there was like six challenges that were all just bullshit like that in the first world. And the second world was just a maze where you had to get to you had to find six points. And Honestly, the whole... if the game's second puzzle is Towers of Hanoi, you know you're not getting anything good oh, out yeah. of it. When you're just using like, other people's we've, puzzles? We've tried nothing, and we've already ran out of every idea we had. Yeah, you seriously, like, the second thing you see playing the game is the tower game. And you're like, I'm like, what the that, fuck? That puzzle is 2,000 years old. Yeah. Everyone's played the fucking thing. And when it's only three, it's also you, super uh... easy. It's the rings, yeah. where the you one... just move the rings over to yep. rebuild the tower on another peg. It's... Yeah. There's that there's that limit of I hate puzzle games that try to that try to coddle you from you know like okay you, maybe you've never played puzzles before let me help you and then there's mm-hmm. like then then there's like people who never get past that so they like do the coddling and they're like okay are you ready for some real puzzles and you're like yeah I guess and then the real puzzles are just like even shittier versions of those puzzles and you're like okay could you like try to step it up like I don't know. But and then like, you play some games, and then, sorry, you play some games, and it's like, hey, do you like puzzles? Yeah. Okay, here's the fucking hard puzzle you're never going to figure out. It's like, oh, okay. <laughs> Getting the balance is so hard. Like, leading the player to know what to do, but not tell them is such a difficult balance to achieve. Like, for me, the most baffling thing about this game was that it's very clearly divided into four separate worlds that you enter from a hub. Mm-hmm. But it's not. there's no checkpoints between the two the no worlds, themes. even. So that yeah. means that as you get to the increasingly more complicated, and frankly, I played two of the four worlds, so I, as far as I could tell, it doesn't seem to get complicated, it just seems to get more and more like lengthy and tedious, basically. You're, every mm-hmm. single time you die, your punishment is you get to go play Towers again, and do the whole mm-hmm. process from scratch, even though you've already shown you can beat all of it. Yeah. Like, it's, there's nothing to go See, on. The hard part of making puzzles is what I just said, you know, teaching the player and making the puzzle very, very clear. The easy part is not fucking having no checkpoints or not theming your areas. That's like the yeah, no-brainer I... stuff about how to design puzzle games. Mm-hmm. What was that game that you guys were playing where you had to, what, draw those points from oh, one thing to another? Witness. The Witness? I thought yeah. it was interesting that it could make that many puzzles using the same yeah like, yeah. like 700 of That's them amazing <laughs> yeah right because i i'm used really. to puzzle games like mist where every <laughs> environment every world is a special has, puzzle. they have to keep making up uh, a new mechanic it's a different puzzle yeah yeah you're not yeah. you're it's not the same mechanic you can have a puzzle mm-hmm. Dealing with colors, dealing with sounds, yeah. well, dealing that, with and that's pr- really water cool pressures. Too. That's, that's the thing really about cool Witness, though. Way. The thing about Witness is it actually did keep making up new, completely different puzzles. It's just that they used that panel with the lines as its universal language for how you interact mm-hmm. with them. So you would always His know how to touch to the puzzle, basically. Is like godlike. Like, that's oh, some Jonathan yeah. Blow as being an incredible game designer. I, I remember the original critiques where it's like, it's the same puzzle over and over again. It's just Snake. You play it for 30 minutes, 
no matter who you yeah. are, it's like wow. After that, after that point, like you, it clicks like why it's good. I think. You know what's a really good puzzle game? Uh, one... Simpsons Puzzle Freakout. No, I like just... the Tetris clone. I hope Huge you made that pipe. one up. I Huge made that up. Pipe. Huge pipe. Huge what? Pipe? Is so, it yeah. the pipe with like? Uh, you think dream pipes, right? Is that where you're the, the game where you try to figure yeah. out why your Just toilet in real life stacked up? Wire it. Yeah, that thing, <laughs> that thing was scary when I was a kid. That I game was always was, too stressed out. That game was so fucking hard. You'd be like, "Oh, I could do dream this." Dream pipes is, is easy. really, really difficult. And then yeah. the moment, the moment you're like past level five, it's like, "Oh, you think you're fucking good? Well, all the waters are running now." It's like, "Oh, okay. Well, wait, wait. Let me try to turn this right way." It's like, Ugh. "Oh, we're talking about Pipe Dream, like the yep. game that yeah, they used for dream. hacking yeah. in a uh, Bioshock." Yeah. That's yeah, the only reason yeah, I know the name is like, because it was the hacking game in Bioshock, and people yeah, called it that. Pipe Dream was a game that's been out since like the '80s or something. I love it's Pipe an Dream. old computer I'm so game. It's almost as old as the towers. I'm so good at that game. <laughs> what, the Twin Towers? No. Oh. No. <laughs> I was like, I don't. The Tower of so Hanoi. Like... Holy oh, shit! We were just discussing this. <laughs> I just blanked out. He, for he a second. was reading manga. Stroke. It's fine. Clearly, did you uh, have a stroke? stroke? Are you okay, Andrew? <laughs> I, you know, look, I live my life in between strokes and starvation, so it's it's pretty struggling. But I, I get enough. by because I have chickens, and <laughs> and, and that's we why we all have chickens now. And you know, you, have, you at least have to live long enough to drain their essence um, <laughs> for the shard. I mean, yeah. The, the right. no, he has to lock we should definitely first. call this. Though. Yes, we, we just hit two hours out of spite. Hour Take that, Wonderbutt. Yes. See you guys next week. <laughs> <laughs>